going to give you a quick demo of our CTN Network website, ctnnetwork.net. Join our community. It is free. You just type in ctnnetwork.net. And this is the homepage right here. And if you want to create an account, uh, you would just click up here and create new account right here. Sign up with your email or you can sign up with just clicking on Facebook or Google. So you can sign up with your Facebook account or your Gmail. So I'm already signed up. So I'm going to click in uh, Gmail right here and it's going to log me in. And as you can see, this is our homepage. Click on creators right here. And this shows you all the CTN family members that are content creators. Everybody is on here. If you want to go to one of their YouTube channels, for example, if you want to go to Crypto Talk Now, just click on channel and it takes you right over to the YouTube channel for that particular creator. And you click on community. This is our community right here. We do have a forum and uh, this is a forum where you can post things. You can interact with one another. And there's also a blog right over here that we post our own content on. And if you click on CTN Studios, you can watch our live show and other content creators live shows right through this CTN Studios. We do have advertisements for some of the content creators. There's the Crypto Smith, there's Wadi, the Crypto Hunter, and we also have live charts for the ISOs right in this box right here. Uh, we have a feature where you click on the heart if you wanna donate to us. You can donate with Ethereum or Binance, BNB. And also, if you click on this button right here, we're going to have a call-in feature, which is already live. If you want to call us, just click on the green icon, the green phone icon, and click on Call Now. And during the show, between 9.15 and 10, when we announce it, when Max is on or when I'm on with Max, we will start accepting phone calls, and you guys can be live with the show. If you want to turn your video on, you can come on camera as well. So good stuff there. Now back onto the homepage. If you click on members, you can see all the people that are members here. Uh, all these people here like Chaka just signed up, uh, Gills33, Miguel. All these people here are members of our community. So you guys can sign up and then you can chat with one another. So you can either click over here, message right here. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm just going to welcome him. I'll send him a quick message, and then I can click enter or just a little arrow. If you want to message somebody else, you can click on message, or you can go right over here into members chat and go ahead and message them and create a new chat if you want by clicking this little button right here. Now, also, if you scroll down here, you can see some of the past videos that our content creators in our content creator family have created. You can go in here and watch some of the recorded videos. They're scrolling down here. Just choose one to watch. And that's it, guys. Thank you for watching this brief demo. Make sure you sign up so you can interact and be part of the community when we are not on the live show. Hello and good evening, everybody. Glad to be here with you guys. I'm just going to double check my settings. I think I'm good. Uh, making sure I'm not muted and all that good stuff. All right. I am good. Well, you know what? Glad to be here. Um, I had some big news in regards to Stellar XLM. And for this particular segment, since I recorded it earlier, um, I decided, you know what? I want to go ahead and... Um, you know, just upload it to you guys later tonight uh, for you can watch it, you know, again, because I just don't feel like uh, doing two separate recordings in that regard. So uh, we do have a little bit of stellar for tonight for you guys. And I'm going to give you an intro to that particular recorded video um, here on the live. That way you can at least have a taste of what's coming in that regard. Um, but everything for the most part tonight, you see Tade 
we'll have some footage. Um, there's some big news in regards to XDC, HBAR, um, even Algorand. In fact, I think after we show you some of our community news updates, we'll just jump right into Algorand to start things off, especially for you PayPay holders. I know that sounds crazy. Algorand and PayPay? What is going on? What is this blasphemy, right? Well, we'll jump into all of it here in a bit. I'm going to go ahead and pull up a few of our banners just to kind of make the HUD look a little bit better. And on top of that, I just want to thank everybody who's here currently tonight. Smash that like button if you haven't done so already. And thank you for joining us tonight for some crypto talk now. Let's go ahead and welcome some community members. And to uh, start things off, I'm going to double check the other screen, make sure we're good. Looks like we are. All right. So let's jump into it. It's kind of a weird day for crypto attendance, all that stuff. Um, Tim Shea says, hey, glad to have you here, Mr. Tim Shea. Appreciate you. And on top of that, Stargazer says, hey, all, I already smashed the like button on the way in. Um, I see I'm way too early, so I'll be back. No, it's okay. You're more than fine. Um, but welcome both Magic Power, Stargazer, Tim Shea, obviously, you know, Mayor of Crypto, Crypto Commissioner. Sorry about missing your title, right? Um, and then Brittany is also back. Thank you for being here, Brittany. Selmo Thud, always good to see you, brother. Glad to have you here, Mr. Selmo Fudd. And Cars and Crypto's back. He says he heard Coinbase uh, gearing to delisting a Gala games and who knows what else. Yikes, that's that's not good. I mean, is it because they had a, a big pullback? I saw this morning that some people were complaining about, you know, um, Gala having a big, big pullback. Um, I don't know what's going on with that. So River is in the house. Welcome back, River. Glad to have you here. Um, I want to welcome back Eddie T. Thanks also for the other day. I, th I think that we saw you. I, sh I should say thank. I, I did see you. You were on um, Space Chick with myself, Space Chick, and Mike, the investor. That was a really cool show. Um, so thank you again, Eddie T, for showing up to that, as well as you know some of the other guys like Brittany. I saw Tim Shea there. Um, I believe I also saw like GS. I think I saw some other familiar people there. That was pretty cool stuff. All right, so Brian Dowie says, sup, Max? Sup to you, Brian Dowie? Yeah, for me, yesterday, it was it was a long day as far as doing shows because um, I was probably on air for like a total of over five hours between both shows. And, you know, some people are like, well, you do that all the time. Well, I also did some recorded videos earlier um, and, you know, let's face it, work as well. It was just, it was, it was a long day. All right, let's go further down. Glad to have you here, though, Mr. Brian Dowie. And with that said, I'll try my best. To read all of your comments yes all right crypto jedi welcome back glad to have you here this is the uh crypto news network you're looking for these aren't the droids right i messed that up anyway tim shea says pepe is sending it as soon as we get done welcome you guys i think what i'll do is i'll just move this tab over um for we can basically speaking i mean you know just get into you know um the algo and, and pay pay uh business right so probably headline that one yep all right got that one primed ready to go um we also got mr gs in the house again welcome 898 million market cap man you, you, i mean you guys got in early on that that's that's great i'm glad you guys did really well on it. that was probably one that i missed and i'm okay with that i'm not gonna sweat too much um Let's go further into it. I want to welcome the Jasmine movement. Welcome back. Thank you for being here. Um, and also thank you for your support, not just of us, but other people in the, you know, the Jasmine community, embracing other content creators, just anyone who's, you know, even if they're not putting out content on YouTube, those do on Twitter, uh, you just, you know, really kill it with that. So, um, you know, that's one thing I love about the Jasmine community. Very, you know, a very embracing community. And that, that's a big win, whether, you know, you're just getting started or, you know, some of these other guys have been around in Jasmine for a year or more. Okay. Um, I'm glad everybody's welcoming each other. Thank you, Ahmed, for being back here again tonight. Always good to see you, Mr. Ahmed. And Jasmine Movement says, Max and Larry keeping it real all the time. Much love and respect always. Thanks, man. Really, really appreciate that. Um, and, and you too. I mean, you keep it real as well. You know, you're, you're tagging uh, quite a few different people. You're sharing great content. We appreciate you, man. 
All right. Um, Aquaman says, Stellar Lumens, baby, the chosen one. Yeah, we'll, we'll you know, uh, how about this? Um, right after we show you the little teaser, um, I should say the teaser, the, the Algorand Pepe. I know that sounds crazy, right? Algorand and Pepe. After we show you that, we'll jump into the Stellar teaser. Um, so it's good stuff in that regard. Welcome to Cool Cat Crypto. He is, you know, doing his thing all over that frog. He's, he's just like, I'm a cat. I, I'm not cool with frogs, you know? I just go after all the frogs. All right. Uncle Thursday says he loves Stellar. Bags are packed. Yep, my bags are packed too. But you know what? Even though they're, they're packed, I'm still going to recognize opportunities. And um, the way I look at it, you know, how much longer are we going to, or excuse me, are we going to be able to get Stellar Lumens XLM for under 10 cents, you know? It is what it is, right? All right. All right. But glad to have you here. Uncle Thursday in the house. Um, I want to welcome Crypto Smooth. Uh, nice looking avatar. He says, what up, Max? Good to have you here. Uh, what's up is we're going to get into some of this news here in a bit, right? All right. Um, Triple C says, bought two things yesterday, BSV and Pepe. We did have some, you know, BSV. We did, you know, some coverage, um, I think quite a bit actually yesterday. I don't know. I think um, Cool Cat left at some particular point, but that's okay. Um, what I'm definitely going to do though is um, I'm going to take some of that, some of those deep dives that we did yesterday and then some of the other stuff that we had from that uh, New York State Senate committee thing. And then if anything, I'll, I'll try to do a proper video because um, not only that, I mean, we've had a pretty decent following uh in regards to bsv i mean you could tell people are subscribing to it they appreciate the content so that's a good thing all right i also want to welcome mr beyond the barbell good to see you back he's got new videos literally every single day if you want something that's just quick and precise in regards to jasmine um i believe mr btb here put out a video uh the other night it was just like two and a half minutes but right to the point but you know we can't thank you enough for keeping up with this Jasmine coverage that you have. Um, you know, sometimes people don't want to just watch a deep dive from Mr. Maximus all the time. They just want somebody like yourself that's going to give them that quick update. And you know what? Like I mentioned before, it's just about finding your niche. Or some people say niche. I'm old school. Say niche. Do what you're doing. In your channel, obviously, you're getting rewarded for that. I saw that you're over 300 subscribers. Remember how it was a big deal the other week? Where you get up to 100. So you see what's going on. And that's awesome, man. So shout out to you. I also saw that you got some videos of yourself out in, you know, like your front yard and letting people know to get some fresh air. All those things are good things, man. So keep up the good work. Give Beyond the Barbell a follow. You'll be glad you did so. And just, just like his name implies in the comments, um, you can look that up on YouTube and it'll bring you right to his channel. He's also on Twitter. Great member of the Jasmine community. Thank you again. All right. Um. Bachman says space chick. Yep, space chick. Uh, it was yesterday, and it was it was a great show. I mean, um, I invited quite a few people, you know, from work and so on. There was a uh, like a potluck, if you will. Um, people came in, and they had. There's this lady, Miss Martini. She had a, a chicken adobo. Um, there was subs, all that stuff. We had at least 30 to 40 people from the lecture hall who you know tuned in. I was the only complaint I had was like, you guys don't have, a, why don't you have a YouTube app? I mean, most of these people are young. Why don't you have a YouTube app? Oh, we're all TikTok. So it's like, uh, I guess it still counts as a view. I mean, you're just not going to be able to like, I don't even know if you could hit the like button. You have to have like an account. And it's just like, why younger kids don't have YouTube? I mean, it, to me, it's like, isn't a rule of thumb to have, you know, the YouTube app on your phone and then, you know, uh, TikTok. I don't have TikTok installed on my phone, <laughs> so I, I guess they could get me on that. But um, anyway, I was just I was glad that they showed up and so I just wish I could have saw a few more people comment. At the end of the day, they're probably there for the free food, so whatever. But hey, the part of the deal was they had to watch some space chick, you know, Mike the investor and uh, Max of crypto talk now in order to get some of that. So it is what it is. But uh, it was it was kind of funny, you know, the whole concept of them all on their on their little you know, cell phones and stuff, watching it. And there's some people on their computers and obviously on the big screen as well. So it was, it was a nice turnout. And um, I think we had maybe about 160, 170, something like that there. Um, looking forward to getting them with them again. Uh, we talked about H bar. We talked about uh, quants. We talked about Jasmine. They weren't aware of Jasmine. 
they're obviously aware of um, HBAR and and Quant. But um, that was cool stuff. I, I really enjoyed doing that. I talked a little bit about Filecoin over there too. So uh, Crypto Jetta says, "May the fourth be with you." Yes, this is you know this is an absolute big holiday for Star Wars fans. Please do not ruin the Mandalorian new season with spoilers um if you do you will uh, receive a permanent ban from this channel i'm kidding i won't do that but I, I will not be pleased uh if anybody did really do that cool cat says my bsv and my pay pay all right lazy jedi welcome back he says what up max what up lazy jedi shout out to you and the lazy shaman show featuring who steve the canadian that's right all right, glad to have you guys here. Um, I'm probably going to jump into the news here in a bit because we need to do so. I want to welcome Yamaha Pacifica, and I'll probably welcome a, maybe a couple more people, like Coochie Boy. Welcome. Make them take them. What up, Max and everyone? Glad to have you here, man. Glad to see some familiar faces. All right, um, and I'm going to read this. I finally accumulated 10,000 next era. We have some news, recent news in next era as well. All right, so... It's not going to be WrestleMania tonight. Um, roughly right around the two-hour mark, I probably will skedaddle. Why is that? I do want to watch game two of the number six-seeded Gold State Warriors versus the number seven-seed Los Angeles Lakers. That's a great match. That match that's just great basketball in general. Um, I am a LeBron fan. I'm not a Laker fan. I am a LeBron fan. So... I guess you say technically I'm rooting for the Lakers in that regard, but in, in reality, it's just good. It's just if you're a fan of NBA basketball, it's like that's must watch basketball. All right. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to kick it into um, our news. And believe it or not, it's Algorand. Yeah, Algorand and Pepe. Smash that like if you haven't done so already. Let's go ahead and jump into this. So I know a lot of you guys hold this Pepe thing, right? And they'll hold it against you, you know, recognize opportunity. It doesn't matter if it's a mean coin or it's a utility project. If there's opportunity there and you see it, seize the moment, right? Well, here it is. And if anything, I think I got it up right here. Um, and I apparently don't have it up right there. It's my bad. Let me pull this up. But basically speaking, um, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's good stuff to see. Uh, see this, right? So I had on oh, actually the wrong tab. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and share this. And here it is. Plain as day. Can you believe this? So, so this was reported from Exodus Crypto Wallet. And you may be thinking, well, who are these guys? I mean, some of you guys might know about it, Some of you may not. Well, they state in this particular press release that was released today at 1227, only about six hours ago, Pepe has been bridged to Algorand. Wow, you're kidding. Okay, that has that caught my attention. It is now available for swapping on Tiny Man Org, which is quite the, the, the name, right? But um, they are an exchange. I am aware of them. Um, I forgot there's another particular project that, um, you know, where you could use this. So I, I, I remember seeing this in the past. Um, I don't know if it was to buy maybe... I don't know. It's a particular coin. It was not necessarily Algo. Um, possibly could have been maybe LCX. I can't remember. Um, might have been possibly um, Rio, right? So I, I am aware of this Tiny Man thing. So it says Tiny Man is a decentralized trading protocol on the Algorand blockchain, creating an open and safe marketplace for traders, liquidity providers, and developers. So it says in today's video, we'll talk up all about Tiny Man, the premier Algo Dex protocol. So, yeah, Pepe with Algorand through Tiny Man. Here we go. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Powered by the fast, cheap, and green Algorand blockchain, Tiny Man is a new financial alternative that gives everyday people equal access to financial opportunities. It's a permissionless, trustless trading app that lets anyone participate in financial transactions like trading Algorand tokens, including Algo and Opal, or stable coins such as USDC, providing liquidity in liquidity pools while earning a share of fees in return, farming or staking token pairs to earn more token rewards, bridging crypto such as BTC, ETH, and stable coins from other networks to Algorand. 
The small project also has some pretty big backers. Tiny Man secured $2.5 million in funding from Arrington Capital, Genesis Capital, Block Tower Capital, and others in 2021. Don't forget to retweet and like to see more videos from Exodus. All right, glad to share that with you guys. You know, because at the end of the day, I mean, it is Algorand news, and a lot of you guys are, in fact, into Pepe. So I thought, you know what? This leapfrogs it to the headlines of the show. On this next particular segment that we're going to get into tonight, it is in regards to a teaser for Stellar. Now, the footage that you have, you're about to see here, um, you may think, well, this might be considered old footage. But for the deep dive layout for the Stellar video tonight, it will make perfect sense on why... I gave you this teaser. So without further ado, let's go ahead and show you what exactly is going on with CBCs, Australia, and Stellar. Here we go. into finance news, I'm Melissa Darmwan. Joining us again is the Chief Executive Officer of Novartis Group, Peter Cook. Peter, nice to see you. Mel, hello. Great to be back. Thank you. Always lovely to have you here. Now, Novartis has recently announced two deals around your stablecoin services. Talk us through it. We've been able to announce uh, partnerships with both Stellar and Ripple, two of the major uh, cross-border uh, blockchain networks both based out of Silicon Valley and both with very high market capitalizations relatively. Uh, Ripple we've done a lot of work with in the past for cross-border payments and Stellar we had started on a blockchain program with them a number of years ago, but now we're really bringing uh, it to life. So we're building a multi-chain stablecoin service, initially on both the Ripple and Stellar chains. And in fact, what's a great thing is both Ripple and Stellar are largely funding the development work and even some of the marketing work that we do to get our stablecoin service out. So the stablecoin will be a dollar for dollar backed uh, Australian dollar stablecoin. So uh, we are a licensed company. We will be running our funds in trust accounts. And then we've got a, an Australian dollar stablecoin uh, named AUDC. Uh, somewhat in line with the nomenclature of, of the US stablecoin, USDC. I know, just, I think a couple of weeks ago, we were just talking about the role of digital assets with Navadi. Can you loop that in in regards to the strategy now? So stablecoin for us is essentially a major foray into digital assets. We are still a payments company, a traditional payments company, but this now gives us a major entree between, let's call it, uh, cryptocurrency, which goes up and down and is subject to other market forces, and, and real utilitarian uh, crypto-based assets. So uh, we build the stablecoin, it becomes part of our ecosystem or our infrastructure, which is licenses, tech, commercial partnerships, and from there we leverage and monetize for our either financial services customers or end in, in, uh, business type customers. We will uh, provide services out as stablecoin as a service and, and also for um, uh, holding and transacting of funds for things such as cross-border payments, um, on-ramp, off-ramp for, for cryptocurrencies and other services yet to, yet to be seen. In, in terms of par partnering with Ripple and Stellar, I mean, they are two of the major networks. We've been able to work with them and, and be a major uh, partner of theirs in Australia. And I think that goes to uh, a lot of the success of Novartis is that we can work with these global companies and, and bring through significant commercial deals. So how do you see this impact on your revenues? Uh, Melissa, for the next year, at the least, we'll have revenues will be a number of the payments from Ripple and Stella for, for their grant programs that, that ameliorate uh, our tech build costs and some of our marketing costs. Uh, as we start to monetize later this year, then we'll start to get transaction fees from, from the stablecoin service as well. Let's talk about your results. So I know you, you also recently announced some quarterly results. Talk us through the highlights. The March quarterly results, uh, our revenue is about 10.4 million. 
On, on a like-for-like -like basis with our December results, we'd gone from 6.3 million to 6.8, and then the increase from 6.8 to 10.4 was uh, the Malaysian company ATX starting to come into our accounts. Um, on, on a, against a prior calendar period for Novati itself, we were up about 60% quarter on quarter for the prior, prior calendar period. And then uh, with ATX coming in, we're now over $10 million a quarter. So, you know, really great uh, growth results. So we're bringing in stablecoin services. It adds to the other services that we're providing. We've been growing the company at about 50% per annum. If we continue to do that for the next 12 months, our aim is to get to cash flow positive uh, last quarter of financial year 23 and really show the market that we will be a profitable major global payments company. Exciting times ahead. Peter Cook, great to see you back in Sydney again. Thanks, Melissa. So again, that's just a teaser in regards to the deep dive. When you watch the deep dive, the main key takeaway from it should be this one particular topic, and that is inclusion. Watch the deep dive later on tonight when it's released, or if you're, you know, one of those people on the East Coast and saw that's pretty too, that's uh, too late for you. You definitely watch it tomorrow morning. But it has a whole outline in regards to this thing in regards to Australia, CBDCs, uh, Novati, all that stuff. For me personally, I feel as though this concept of what Stellar's got going on is the path forward. All it takes is one country to be on board and for people or the world, I should say, to see the success what's going on with that to kind of get the ball rolling yeah we need that you know regulatory clarity but again it could be the path forward to say the least all right gonna kick it back into the comments and then after that we're gonna give you guys some headlines from the community coochie boy a few other guys and so on smash that like if you haven't done so already let's go ahead and try to jump into some of this and if anything you know what i think um it's going to be a good show for the most part because, you know, we have um, some juicy stuff to get into and some good updates, to say the least, to also get into here in a bit on the show tonight. All right. So with that said, let's get back into the comments and uh, let's read some of this. Some of the stuff I'm not going to read, but um, I don't really go after other influencers, but that's okay. Um, I want to welcome... Mr. J Crypto, he says, hey guys, Pepe has another one called POV, it's coming strong, okay. Um, I did see a super chat come in, so I'm gonna bookmark this. And let me see who it came from, I think it came from Henry Brown, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see where we're at in regards to that. Thank you again, Henry, for the $2 super chat. He says, XLM will go stellar soon. Shout out to the crypto game. Well, shout out to you, man. Glad to have you here. And um you know there's a reason why stellar xlm is consistently my number three of my top five um they're just doing big things i mean there's no denying them to a sense you know um just gonna check my settings okay no frame rate leg that's something i've been really checking big time before i come online so like if i render a video i'm like all right don't just you know hop on like, make sure all that stuff is good because, I mean, it drives you crazy if you see yourself lag a lot because um, then, you know, people see it too. It just doesn't go well. All right. But, yeah, thank you again, Henry Brown, for your ongoing support. I'm going to double check the other screen, making sure I didn't miss anything else, just in case if there was no super chat. Um, doesn't look like there was. That's okay. And let's get back into the comments. So let's see here. I saw there's quite a few more, and that's good. You know, that's great. I mean, I'm glad that you guys are here supporting the community, talking about, you know, some of the crypto that you're into, whether it's PayPay or, you know, some of these uh, utility ones and so on. Nothing wrong with that. All right. Um, but yeah, glad to have you here, Mr. J Crypto. Um, and let's see. Uh, Mr. J Crypto also says, Besides Pepe, they they is I think you meant to say they are another one. There, there is another one. That's okay. Called Bart. It's moving fast, like Bart Simpson, huh? You know, ironically, since the Simpsons came out when I was in the fourth grade, you know, people say, well, how old will would uh, Bart Simpson technically be? 
if um, he would have aged? And the answer is he'd be 42 years old. I'll be 42 on Friday, May 12th. Anyway, Friday after this Friday. Wow. Well, I'll have to figure out what to do on that particular day. Um, oh, you're not going to do nothing, Max. You're going to be here with us. Yes, probably will be. And there's nothing wrong with that either. All right. Crypto Smooth says, had a nice bag of Jasmine on Voyager and lost it. Yikes. Just bought back in yesterday. Well, maybe you'll end up getting custody of it at some point. When? I don't know. You know, um, I was looking at the prices of, uh, for instance, Voyager. You know, we, we talk about distressed assets. So at least we did last year, right? Sometimes we talk about a little bit um, of this stuff this year. Like what's still distressed? Is there opportunity? I want to show you something real quick in regards to Voyager. Um, let's try to bring this up for a moment. All right. I share my screen on this particular one. So here's Voyager. And the other night I saw this below 20 cents. And I said to myself, this has to be the bottom. And guess what? It basically was. Um, I'm going to show you for the last three months. All right. So, you know, yeah. I mean, you can see even on the graph or the chart. I always call it graph. On the chart. It literally is the bottom. So is, is it going to tank more from here? I got to look more into it. But, you know, there's a lot of indicators suggesting that it could. Um, you know, like this guy on the 25th, he said, breaking Binance US has canceled its agreement to acquire crypto lending firm Voyager. You know, that itself will tank it, right? Uh, this guy's like, you know, already recovering, sharp sellout. I mean, you got to keep in mind, a lot of times these people in the comments, like some of them are do they really have the best interest in heart? Like, you know, is this accurate? You guys, part of doing your own research. But um, this might be one that, depending on the consistency of how far the bottom is, if you will, I may consider picking some of this up just from the perspective of, you know, it, it's a nice swing trade. Um, this was probably like one of like maybe only two or three um, profitable ones that I had in the 2022 um, crypto winner, which was Voyager. Um, I think some of you guys know the story. I came in at like 39, 40 cents, um, roll that up to like a dollar, dollar four, dollar seven, something like that. Um, and then of course, I you know took the profits and then swapped it to Luna Classic, and of course that's down. But the point is that you know allowed me to have an entry point into that and add more to it. So um people are going to do these things all day long and you know if you if, if you're thinking like uh you know voyager you know do they still have a decent amount of volume yeah i mean even right now that the volume is down you know 10.5 million dollars is nothing bad and i at they they still have a confirmed market cap believe it or not it's not like a lot compared to where it used to be but you know 57 million and so on i'm not telling you to get into finance or um to voyager it's not financial advice but understand and i think a lot of you guys do there is something to be said when it comes to distressed assets you can make a decent yield on distressed assets um if you're swing trading this and so on as far as long-term hold i mean is anybody really doing a long-term hold for voyager at this point maybe i'm not so um I'm just looking at that, you know, looking at it from that perspective, um, when things become even that much more bullish in the market, um, there's no reason why you can't see something like this potentially take off. Um, so, you know, again, I just want to bring it to your attention. I did notice it last night and I felt as though that this was one that is basically, if it's not at bottom now, um, it's either nearing that, but again, pay attention to anybody who you feel as though, um, made it you know had great calls in the past with their technical analysis um and again you know if, if they have information for you about certain support lines where like man this is going to drop or this is going to tank or there's any recent news whether it's um mainstream or whether it's community driven news that suggests something like you know what man this is something you, you know it's going to tank even more from where it's at you know like 15 cents or 10 cents and so on you gotta you gotta take that into account as well so you know it is crypto and you know things can be very volatile but um it's definitely one i'm 
looking very closely at as far as that perspective goes on that distressed asset. All right, I'm going to kick it back into a few more comments, then we're going to get back into our lineup tonight. Um, Summo Fudd says, 1 billion market cap incoming froggy style. Um, yeah, I mean, approaching a billion dollar market cap is pretty impressive compared to where they were. Uh, how do you lose it crypto smooth? Oh, because it's, it was on Voyager, basically. I mean, you know, you can't you can't do anything with that platform. Yep, just like you said right there. So I mean, it sucks to see that. Bjorn Barbell says 100. Uh, that space chick, very nice lady. I mean, I just want to state that. I mean, you know, I'm glad to call her a friend and so on. I'm, I'm glad to um, network with other people right that are out there and so on and i do hold some vault so i mean we did talk about a little bit about that but you know it was nice to um i think her community appreciated you know uh i guess talking about some of the other things other than just vault right so you know h bar quant um a little bit of file coin um jasmine you know they they like what they heard about jasmine all right, River makes a good point here. He says he doesn't hear too much about XWAP protocol other than in his chat. Is it something to look at? Price is low. I never personally got into XWAP, but, you know, my thing is this. You know, it is part of XDC. Um, I do look at XWAP as being one of those types of ones that's kind of like, um, I guess you could say kind of like how you look at Pancake Swap or how you look at Uniswap, but on the XDC network. And that in itself, right, you know, later this year, I think dApps are really going to stand out. So if dApps are really going to stand out, is XDC's XSwap protocol going to stand out? Could very well be the case. Now, it's been getting a lot of um, criticism as of lately. I don't know if that's necessarily warranted, but, I mean, at these particular prices, you know, as the saying goes, do more of your own research. Find out if it's something that's, you know, the opportunity is there for you. I will state this, though. If I had to pick one or the other, and this is just me, and I'm not into either one of these yet. If somebody said Max pick GBEX or X swap, I might have to go with GBEX. That's just me personally. All right. Um, Louis Freely says, So is Kermit Pepe's brother? I don't know about this stuff. I mean, you know, uh, I I gotta admit, I don't I see what's going on, other channels, and you know, some of you guys talking about, but as far as like who's related to who on some of these meme tokens, uh I don't have the answer on that one. So I'm sure some of you some of you guys can answer that. Yeah, it's it is sorry to see that. You know, I even mentioned when I was on Space Chicks uh, show the other day, yesterday. You know, Voyager got brought up because you know Mike the investor. I originally used a referral link and then I signed it. You know, signed up for Voyager. I was gonna get like for instance Shib um, at the time and some other tokens on Voyager, but at the time Voyager had a what was it a four? I, I don't know. It was either a uh, hundred and for what it was 40 it was either a 40 day waiting list or something like that like it was like a month and a half yeah it was it was a waiting list and i was just like you know what if i keep waiting for shib um on voyager the, on this waiting list it's just gonna you know i'm not gonna be able to get it at this lower price so as a result i found out that i didn't have these type of problems the waiting list on crypto.com i want to talk about dodging a bullet if i would have went with voyager Oh my gosh, I would have been like, I would have lost thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, just like a lot of people. So I did mention that. I dodged a bullet with that. And um, I dodged quite a few bullets in that regard. So, all right. Let's read a few more comments and then we will kick into the rest of our lineup. Um, I want to welcome Mr. Big Watch Dude, who's in the house. I gotta start putting on my watches. Um, he said, "What's good, Max and CTM fam? Glad to have you here." And I'll read one more, um, which is uh, it's just Brian Dowie because I said to read all his comments. So he says, "Lazy Jedi, dab." All right. So with that said, let's use that as a bookmark. Um, all right, or you know what? Let's use this as a bookmark. Welcome, Stevie. He says, "Yo, all best avatar in." crypto i still believe that so again thank you for being here mr stevie all right let's kick it back to what we have because you know what we do need to get more into some of this stuff all right so on the lineup um believe it or not is this next one is regards to the sec 
You know, got to reference some Eminem. If the SEC won't let me be, I'll be me on MTV. Something like that. Uh, not quite, right? Kind of a little bit of a remix. All right. So this is some Ripple slash, S, you know, SEC Ripple XRP news. I mean, you can call it that if you want. So as you can see right here, this comes from Earth Angel dot xrp i used to love that song especially you know played by um you know in, in the movie uh back to the future right so you know earth angel here reports that because the sec never believed they could beat ripple they just needed to slow them down in the u.s um you know in her opinion of course this comes actually originally from cyprus uh demanicor as you guys know you know he was the guy that uh, some people say, uh, oh, man, he flooded, you know, Cypherium, right? So he's the original guy to um, get this out. So this was, I believe, technically speaking, uh, reported yesterday. It's being shared today. But it says, breaking May 3rd, 2023, institutional gathering. Some of the biggest names all met, yeah, in California. Yeah, in California to discuss institutional adoption of digital assets. The Ripple versus SEC lawsuit was a stage plan from the beginning. Why would a company doing something so criminal? I'm gonna stop that voice anyway. Um, be at the at all the institutional events, right? You know, come on, you know, you know, Governor California, ah, digital assets with California, San Francisco. Anyway, we're gonna play this. All right, here we go. You really, truly got to love the games they play. A lot of people don't know. Check this out. Digital Assets Week, California. When did it end? Just yesterday, May 3rd, 2023. Hmm, who was involved in this Digital Assets Week where they are doing what? Let's go down. Discussing digital securities, digital assets, and institutional crypto, right? We see right here, Carolina DFAM. Y'all know who that is. Commodity Futures Trading Commission. Who's right next to her? Chris Larson, a speaker at this event, executive chairman of Ripple. How is a company that's being sued by the SEC for doing something illegal at all of these events? Again, updated events. This was just yesterday, 2023. Let's go over sample of attending companies, major banking institutions. We got JP Morgan, Visa, Deutsche Bank, right? Ripple, HSBC, who else? Morgan Stanley, ICC, MasterCard, R3, Bain & Company, City, BlackRock. Come on now. It's a setup, ladies and gentlemen. And Ripple, in some way, shape, or form, is always at the forefront. I like how Chris Larson's at the top of the list of speakers. Very interesting, to say the least. Check. Yeah, he is right. It is very interesting, to say the least, right? I mean all these big companies coming together for these conferences and so on. Yeah. We got to pay attention. So, you know, again, like I always said before, you can't make some of this stuff up. If you tried, you will just come to a conclusion that look, Hey, this made recent news. Why is this going on? Are they coming together for something big, something massive? I think so. You know, they're not going to, all these companies and organizations are not going to get together and just waste their time. Um, to talk about nothing they're definitely talking about something is it because you know we're on the cusp of getting that clarity could very well be you know some people feel as though this is years out who knows but they're all coming together and they're not going to waste each other's time right right all right so with that said i'm going to get back into the next particular thing we have on the lineup tonight um you know a little bit more of that community driven news and I think on this one, this comes from Mr. Coochie Boy. So shout out to Coochie Boy. Let's go ahead and get into this. Smash that like if you haven't done so already. Check this out a little bit more in regards to this topic of like SEC and <clears throat> so on, Ripple. So on this one, it comes straight from CoinDesk. And um, on this one, let's pull it up here in a second. There we go. Um, it says U.S. Court Orders SEC... Uh, to respond to Coinbase allegations within 10 days. All right. That's what I'm talking about, you know? So it says Coinbase last week argued the SEC is providing insufficient regulatory guidance for U.S. companies operating in the crypto sector. 
Well, how do we know that? Well, if you guys were here for it, remember um, Crypto Smith, you know, sent us or put out that tweet, showed Brian Armstrong. I think I think he's there with his lawyer. And, you know, we said, all right, let's play this. We play the full version of it. And, you know, like Crypto Smith was mentioning, Sean Crypto Smith, he was, he was like, you know, this is like a nuclear kick to the balls to the SEC, right? And I said, uh, after we play that, I was just like, wow. Well, all right. Kind of like, you know, in 8 Mile, you know, um, uh, what, what's his name? Um, you know, Future, played by, you know, Mackay Pfeiffer. It's just like, Papa Doc, what you going to do, you know? Well, instead of having only, um, you know, 60 seconds to come back on your, you know, your MC battle, all right? They get 10 days, all right? So what are they going to do? That's the question. So there's this quick clip here. And I'm going to go ahead and play this. Um, but, you know, there's a lot that's mentioned here. And so, you know, we will, I think for the most part, we'll probably play most of this. Um, but before we do so, I just want to read the rest of some of the, you know, the stuff that's here. Hold on a second. So it says the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, has been ordered by a U.S. court to respond to cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase's complaint on you know, how it applies securities laws to digital assets. The Third Circuit Court of Appeals said in a Wednesday filing that the SEC must file its response within 10 days. We know that. Um, if they don't, Coinbase may then file a response seven days thereafter. I mean, this thing could get kind of somewhat drawn, you know, dragged out through the mud, temporarily speaking. Coinbase last week argued that the SEC is providing insufficient regulatory guidance for U.S. companies operating in the crypto sector, saying the commission must, quote, at a minimum, must set forth how to enact an, um, I can't even say that word right now, uh, requirements are to be adapted to digital assets. I don't know. Sometimes, like, I could, I could read the same word over and over all day long, and then it appears different for me. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if some people have this problem sometimes. If you read too much material, whether it's in a textbook, probably not a textbook. You get what I'm saying? Like, if you just read too much, sometimes some words you just can't save anymore. I don't know. I have, I, I gotta admit, I have that problem sometimes. It's not that I don't know a word, it's just I don't want to garble it up. I, I read a ton every day. So hopefully people give me benefit on that. But anyway, it says the crypto exchange referred to a 2022 petition asking for formal rulemaking within the digital asset sector to which the SEC is yet to respond. The 10-day deadline order this week refers to the SEC's requirement to provide a legal basis for why it has not responded to the petition. Coinbase, excuse me, Coinbase has been attempting to launch a preemptive strike against the SEC. I mean, that's funny how they mention this. You know, they make it sound like it's like Russia, you know, going to war with, you know, originally with Ukraine. Coinbase has been attempting to launch a preemptive strike. Okay. Like we're talking about earlier, you know, um, they gave uh, the SEC a nuclear kick to the balls. It's like, okay. And so I just thought that was kind of funny. Anyway, which just said, you know, uh, which said in March, it expected to sue the exchange over allegations of offering unregistered security products. So, you know, a little update in regards to that. We're going to play this. I think we will play the whole thing on this one. So, um, you know, if anything, I will catch up with the comments right afterwards. But, yeah, let's listen to this. Here we go. Of crypto is presented by Tron, connecting the world to the power of cryptocurrency. In what threatened to be a rare moment of clarity from U.S. securities regulators, the SEC at the last minute removed what would have been the first formal definition of digital assets as they see them. The proposed definition had been included in a 2022 proposal to, over, to overhaul mandatory disclosures for hedge funds, but it was removed before passage with the agency noting, quote, the commission and staff are continuing to consider this term and are not adopting digital assets as part of this rule at this time, end quote. For longtime crypto observers, this is disappointing, but not exactly a shock. And even as the regulator has declined to define what they claim authority over, a U.S. judge has ordered that they respond to publicly traded exchange Coinbase's recent lawsuit asking for exactly that, clarity over what the rules actually are for the companies they're, they're demanding compliance from. Jen, I'm going to kick this one over to you first. We've been talking about this type of thing for a long time. What, what, what do you make of these developments? 
We've been talking about this for a really, really long time. And just as we we think we're going to get a little bit of clarity, we wind it back. And so I've told this story on the hash before. I'm not going to get super into it, but I was at a conference talking to someone who's dealing with a regulator in the US. And they were telling me, you know, when they get permissions from the regulator, they say like, yes, here's a license to do this thing. But this is not to say that if you continue to do this thing, it will stay. This, this will still give you permission in the future. The laws could change. The rules could change. And so it's all very confusing. And I, it seems like the SEC behind the scenes just can't make their mind up of what they want to say because they don't know what direction they want to go in. And if they say one thing and give us that little bit of clarity, you know, we may take the reins and run with it. And I, it doesn't really seem like they want that. It seems like we want to keep the water is murky so that they can figure out what's going on behind the scenes. And as you can tell, I'm just very disheartened by it. Zach? Yeah, it's just not so simple, right? There's various types of digital assets and just one overly proscriptive definition of what that may be would open up a whole can of worms for actually useful things that exist because of blockchain technology, right? Are stablecoins a digital asset? Are NFTs a digital asset? Do, can they be defined in the same breath. And I think obviously the SEC may be grappling with this. Some some things just aren't as simple as that, right? So the fact that they are um, taking time at least to get this right is somewhat positive. But yeah, the SEC is trying to do all sorts of things where they're trying to expand the definition of an exchange that could severely hamper the growth of DeFi in the US. And it's really hard to figure out um, all the many things, all the many fronts on which this battle is being waged. You know, we have so much going on with the SEC now. We haven't gotten to the other part of this story, which is that, you know, they've been ordered to respond to uh, Coinbase within 10 days, right? They sort of initiated this fight with the Wells notice. Coinbase came back and said, hey, we're fighting you guys. They made this announcement at consensus last week, by the way. And now court is siding with Coinbase saying, hey, SEC, you got to get it together and, and respond within 10 days. So a lot going on in the regulatory battle that's brewing here in the US. And it's just a lot to unpack. So the fact that they're punting on this one, hey, maybe a good thing. Who knows? Jen? Yeah, the courts are really pushing the SEC, it seems. When I was reading this story about the court giving the SEC 10 days to respond to Coinbase, it reminded me, I forget which bankruptcy case it was, but the SEC went in, tried to stop the bankruptcy proceedings from happening, and the court said, actually, no, you can't go ahead and do this. And so maybe the courts, the judges are going to be the ones who push the SEC to actually give some some clarity moving forward. Adam? Yeah, so a couple of things here. Um, on the uh, the story you're talking about where the bankruptcy judge pushed back, that was Voyager Digital. And it's important to note that Voyager Digital did not actually was not actually able to complete that deal with Binance.us in large part because of the regulatory pressure that was coming on. So that first judge did give them what they wanted in terms of saying, hey, if you guys can't articulate the standard by which you're saying that these people may have committed crimes, then how can I hold up a bankruptcy that affects so many people when you don't even have a, a real position here, right? Uh, so so that worked with that judge. It was immediately appealed by the government, put on hold, and then the deal fell through because, again, the level of hostility that's coming from U.S. regulators has been really significant. On the, the Coinbase side of things, I think it's really interesting. I, I, I saw a take yesterday on Twitter from a gentleman named Metal Law, who uh, is a lawyer in the space, been operating in crypto for a while, and who I've seen a number of really interesting takes from. And his perspective was that this is the worst possible fight that the SEC could pick. Because Gensler, in sort of uh, shortly after being appointed, actually gave congressional testimony as the head of the SEC that said that they do not currently have the authority to regulate exchanges on the crypto side of things, and that they would need new authorities to do that. So fast forward two years, and now his perspective is very different. But the perspective from, uh, from again, this Twitter user was that in order for uh, a, an SEC chairman to go and actually give testimony under oath in front of Congress, there is a lot of paper trail that goes into vetting those decisions and that to the extent that they that he did say that under oath there would have been a lot of sort of background that could be subpoenaed in this lawsuit um, as part of discovery or you know that could be exposed as part of discovery um, and as a result of that it could be very very embarrassing and then leave the the SEC with a very difficult to explain position why did we think that we didn't have the authority here and why do we think that we do have the authority now and more importantly what were the internal communications around both of those things because all of those could be made public so my expectation remains that this is effectively like a shot across the bow that they do not intend to actually fight and to the extent that they do frankly I'm really anxious to see it. I think we could get some interesting fireworks out of it. Zach? 
Yeah, the Coinbase thing is going to be super interesting, right? They vowed from the from the get go that they were going to fight this one and do so in a very public fashion. They seem to have uh, stood by their word on that one, right? They said, "Hey, we got served with this Wells notice. We want to let you know. Hey, we're going to respond to this thing." They made a video with Brian Armstrong and Chief Legal Officer Paul Graywall. So they've been taking a very public tack in their fight against the SEC on this one. Hopefully, to the benefit of the entire industry, right? Like we saw this a little bit with Ripple, right, where it sort of realized that it could sort of be the flag bearer for advancing some of these conversations in its own fight with the SEC, which has dragged on for a number of years now. So Coinbase, I think, taking on this mantle as well is going to hopefully force the conversation in a way that might be beneficial to the crypto industry, right? And I think, you know, again, we're seeing the the beginnings of a long protracted fight, hopefully out of which some clarity emerges. Because again, if it's going to be regulation by enforcement, maybe it's going to be clarity through the legal process rather than through the regulatory rulemaking process or the legislative process, which I think is what people in the industry are wanting to see happen um, as it relates to kind of rather dealing with the, with that devil than with the SEC on the on the uh, executive side. So it is super fascinating to watch this play out with again the flag bearer of US crypto Coinbase going up against the US securities regulator for some definition as to what's what. I don't know. Gary could win. Gary could win this ultimately. We'll see. Jen there's a quote I want to highlight uh, from one of the stories. It's from Anne-Marie Kelly. She's a partner at Mercury Strategies who was a longtime SEC official. She said the SEC is a regulator that requires transparency from its registrants, but it is continuing to withhold regularity, regulatory clarity by not defining digital assets. She went on to say, any recognition of digital assets' uniqueness as a novel product weakens their litigation stance that digital assets are securities and subject to the SEC securities laws. So it's interesting that she draws this back to the SEC stance that that every crypto asset is a security except for Bitcoin. So a lot of things going on that this could point to. And as we always say on this show, time will tell what is going on behind the scenes. All right. You know, well said. I mean, you know, you heard those perspectives. What's going to happen? How about this? You know, John Deaton mentioned that May 6th is supposed to be a, you know, a big date. That's literally Saturday, day after Cinco de Mayo. Um, is it going to be by May 6th? I don't know, right? But this whole thing, even the 10-day thing for uh, the SEC, there's a lot of back and forth going on. But uh, we're definitely going to see something play out here soon. Um, so glad to share this with you guys. Shout out to Kushu Boy who brought this for us. Um, and if you want to be that type of person who, you know, can share community news and so on and updates, you're more than welcome to do so. And I can show you how to go about doing that. Um, so for one, you can basically speaking, uh, tag us. Um, basically, you probably want to tag me. All right. No offense to Larry. So tag at DPG Maximus. The main reason for it is because you could take him, like when he's doing a show, you could take him and he could pull it up for for you guys and so on. But since I'm on, that's that's all I'm trying to say. So you can uh, take me at DPG Maximus, and then if anything, um, we can share that here on the show. Uh, we might not share all of it. Like if we had like you know 30 people doing that once, I mean obviously you know I'm not gonna be here for 10 hours, but um, I might be here for five. No. Um, but yeah, if you're wanting to be a you know CTN sideline reporter, you're more than welcome to do so in that regard. All right, so what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna jump back into the comments because you know I'm probably way behind and that's okay. All right, so uh, I'm gonna read this from Somo Flood. He says, "So sorry for the Shib and Volt community. Shib lost his shine and Volt lost his thunder." All right. Um, let me go further down. Elon Muff says, game 10 won't pay the bills, lol. <laughs> All right. Coochie Boy says, well, I think we mentioned Pepe at seven zeros too. Huh. Or eight zeros. Interesting. Um, Pepe slash Algo pairing. Yeah, it sounds kind of interesting, right? Um, All right. Let's go and let's see what else you guys got as far as specific comments. Tim Chase says, frogs are taking over. Bart is strangling Pepe. All right. My Exodus wallet. I think I might have read some of this a while ago. Yeah, I did. My bad. Ugh. What am I doing? I just had a different highlight. Uh, I want to say hello to Josh Cornwell, JC the man. Hello back to you, my friend. All right. Um, 
So Larry has non-FOMO remorse on Pepe. <laughs> That's funny stuff. All right. Uh, cool Cat says she thought she could hide those from me. Oh, boy. All right. Stargazer, welcome. He says we weren't paying attention, Max. We were all sidetracked. Nah, it's okay. Um, it's all good. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it, we're towards the end of the week. I mean, you know, it'd be different if it was a bad case of the Mondays, right? I saw on crypto Twitter, there's this lady from the 1970s. I mean, you guys saw it as well. She was like this young lady, like, I don't know, early 20s, maybe. Maybe she was like 18, 19. I don't know. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's fake news. Maybe some of you guys saw this as well. But apparently she murdered like at least two people back then. And her reason for it was... Um, she just didn't like Mondays. I mean, wow, you got to kill two people over that? I don't know if it was a uh, lazy Jedi or, you know, um, Shaman Says or somebody like that who shared. Like, maybe it was Shaman Says, but I read that. And I was like, man, you got to be kidding me, man. That's crazy. Um, so anyway, you know, yeah. Tim Shea says, great content so far. Max, well, thank you, Mr. Tim Shea. Uh, Crypto Jedi says, why are they sitting? Oh, how about this? In all caps, why are they saying that XRP will be available on June 13th? Remember, you got to keep in mind, his caps lock key could be broken. And when it's broken, those are the emotions that are coming out. Not really. Um, I don't know. I do not know that. So how about this? Coochie Boy is a legend. He is a legend, especially when it comes to killing on mean coins. Same with even, um, you know, a guy who's, uh, you know, all about utility as well, but he takes advantage of the opportunities, Mr. Elon Muff. All right. Aquaman, don't read, Max. <laughs> don't read. If I don't read, I don't have a job, basically speaking. Um, I will be out of one, you know? So my problem is I read too much, and sometimes it just, it just becomes – I don't know. Does anybody else have some of these problems? Like, have you ever like literally probably read like the, the equivalent of like a novel in a day? And then it's just, it's just word. It's just, it just all becomes just words. It's just like, you know, just like text, like kind of like looking at like Chinese characters. It's just like, Oh God, you know, you, you soak so much information in all day long or you read all day long and it's just, it appears, it starts appearing in front of you like a different way. I, I don't, I'm sure some of you guys can relate to what I'm talking about. Maybe some of you don't, but that's okay. But in my opinion, there's a, such a thing, you know, some people say there, there's no such thing as reading too much. Uh, that's debatable. It's debatable. You can actually read too much where it's just like the word is right there. You know what the word is. You know how to say the word, but you kind of get just you get you're like, ah, oh, I can't get it to come out. I don't know. Maybe it's a problem I personally have. I don't know. So anyway. Uh, add Bart to your trust wallet. Think about how that sounds in itself. Add Bart to your trust wallet. Um, Ahmed, thank you, Henry Brown, for the two USD. Um, yeah, thank you, man. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Larry says almost one billion invest into a picture of a green frog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's basically it, right? You know. We'll never complain ever again about having to pay, you know, six dollars for a Whopper sandwich ever again. Why? Because, like Larry mentioned, we've almost put one billion dollars into or invested into a picture of a green frog. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Stargazer, triple C, not chance with those eyes of yours. Nothing can hide from you. That's true. All right, Stevie, SpongeBob is another good one to get into. Um, will that be the next Pepe? Pepe la All right, Henry Brown, what's everyone's top five cryptos? I think you guys know what mine are, but I'm glad you guys are sharing it. I will read this from Brian now. XRP, XLM, Quant, Jasmine, HBAR. Nice. Um, if for people who want to know, I'll state it, all right? You know, Quant, uh, XRP, XLM, uh, XDC, Jasmine, and then H bar would be number six. LCX would probably be my number seven. As far as number eight, I don't know. Maybe Nexera, maybe maybe Algorand. I have to readjust my top ten. All right, Cool Cat says it's XRP, BSV, XLM, XDC, and H bar. 
cool stuff. Henry Brown is going to report his. Um, his are XRP uh, as the number one, XLM, number two, number three, XDC, number four, HBAR, and number five is a toss-up between Quant and Algo. Huh, okay. Um, Stargazer says Luna Classic is number five. All right. You guys got like, some pretty good lists here. GS, very similar, oh, except for the ADA. Um, Stargazer said Casper, HBAR. You guys got a great list going on there. All right. Coochie boy, that Bart was flagged for evidence of serial scammer. Wow. Yeah, I'm, like that's my thoughts too. Wow. All right. Um, I'm going to see what else you guys got specifically. If there's any questions or anything like that. Tim Shea says, I have GBEX, GBEX and XSwap Max. Well, cool. Yeah, I, I was thinking that some of you guys have both. You know, I think a lot of you guys who have, obviously have GBEX also have the XSwap, right? You know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, if you have XRP, do you not have XLM? You know? Don't speak for Boomer F and Sooner. I think that's the case, though, right? Like, he has XLM, but he doesn't have XRP, but that's okay. All right. Um, Stevie says Quant, Loop, WTK, Casper, Ching. All right. Um, let's see if there's any other specific questions. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Papa Doc, what's she going to do? Uh, according to Brian Dowie, it's just Brian Dowie. WTF, Max, Vaseline. Jeez. No Vaseline without the M16. All right. Um. Stump Rider says, hi, CTM fam. Glad to have you here. And I am going to see who else is up in here real quick. Crypto Smith says, too much off the table, or you took too much off the table with PayPay regretting it now. Hmm. All right, read two more comments. Ahmed, global crypto regulations is needed. I would agree with that. Mark, I want to welcome you. I haven't seen you here before. Let's check out your avatar real quick. All right. Glad to have you here. He says he's holding XRP IMX. HBAR, CRO, ADA, VET, Jasmine, Ethereum, and BTC. You know, if you want, you can let us know what IMX is all about. Um, might be something interesting to look into. And, guys, let's give a warm welcome to Mark. Again, I haven't seen you here before. Usually we tell people to change your avatar to something that speaks more of who they are and what they're about. But you already did that. We hope to see more of you. And if anything, let us know in the comments if you choose. What is IMX? What's it about? And why, you know, you're holding it. So um, I want to welcome just a couple more people. Dave D, uh, where are your students asking questions about crypto today? No, um, not really. Uh, the thing was, you know, when it comes to them, um, it's more like, you know, Hey, I wasn't able to comment. Um, you know, I'm like, yeah, you're not able to comment because you don't have the app. You know, oh, well, why don't you guys just stream on uh, what it was? It was like on Twitch. I'm like, we do stream on Twitch. Oh, I could have came on Twitch. I'm like, oh, geez. I should have had all these people commenting from Twitch, apparently. Um, no, but some of those people are taking blockchain classes and so on. So a lot of them already do know about it. Um, but some of the questions that they ask is, is just kind of like, I even told them, like, no offense to you guys, but you have some dumb questions asking me how to comment on YouTube. And some of you guys take blockchain classes. I said, God help us. You know, <laughs> you know, sometimes I'm, I'm a little bit too blunt, but, you know, it's one of those things. Um, and, you know, we're talking like these people are like college age people. They should know these things. Um, but it is what it is. For the most part, they were there for the, you know, free drinks and the sub sandwiches and the chicken adobo. It is what it is, but there is a few there, um, I think, that did appreciate the show and so on. And who knows? There might be a few here tonight. Um, I don't know if we had a lot of them show up to ours because you got to keep in mind, you know, they're there for, you know, the drinks, the food, the drinks, all that stuff. And then by the time that's done, they have night school, you know. So they're probably, you know, in the night classes. And technically speaking, they can't be on their phones. So. Um, I'm not going to really hold it against them, but I think we had a few people come from over there. But, um, you know, my goal was to have a nice turnout over on Space Chicks, um, you know, and to represent us well as well. And we did have a good turnout. I mean, um, she had, I don't know, 165, 169, maybe 170. I don't know. But in that range, um, there was a lot of likes. There's a lot of engagement. A lot of people were commenting. So it was a good show. And knowing that, it's Mike, Mike the Investor's there. I mean, he's got 77,000. 
um, subscribers on YouTube. He has a pretty decent following on Twitter. So, I mean, it's more than to be expected that we would have a good turnout. Um, I did have a couple students ask about quant, which was pretty cool. Um, they're like, you know, Hey, this has a less, you know, less of supply than Bitcoin. You know, some hold like a little bit of Bitcoin, obviously. Um, believe it or not, the one that, you know, really stood out, there, there was a, I think three people. What really stood out was they were asking questions about Jasmine because, you know, it's cheap. Um, and, you know, th there's one guy in particular, he was asking like, hey, you know, it seems like Japan, like, they're far, you know, they understand where we're going a lot better than the United States. So I thought we'll talk a little bit about that, but it wasn't like, you know, an overwhelming amount of questions and so on. Like, you know, like, I guess you could say it was kind of hoping like good problems, but it's okay. Um, so Mitch states, serious questions. What utility does the green frog provide or any other meme token? Zero, basically speaking, zero. Why do people invest in it? It's what's trending. And, and they look at it as, as, as something that's fun. You know, some people just look like, hey, I'm invested in this for fun. Me personally, I mean, I'm just, I'm not doing that. But I mean, people will do it. And some of you guys are doing really well. Um, it's just not for me. Uh, but guys, let's welcome Mitch Hagi Diaco. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Or Hajid Diaco. Oh, I'll just call you Mitch. So Mitch, we have a very welcoming community here. Glad you asked some of these questions. And consider changing your avatar to something that speaks more about who you are and what you're about. Guys, let's get that warm welcome to Mitch. All right, so we're going to kick it back into our lineup tonight because we definitely need to do so. Um, so let's jump into some of this stuff. So next one on this particular list is a little bit more in regards to, um, I believe, Ripple. And let me see here. Uh, no, it's not because it's just a different article on the same thing from uh, what was reported from Coochie Boy. So we're not going to get into that. What we're going to do now is we're going to get into, um, you know, XDC. So, you know, we haven't reported on XDC for a few days. We are going to get into some XDC. Um, but let's see what we got here. Uh, before I do so, I'm going to share this real quick. This is actually, I'm sorry. This is from Crypto Jedi. Remember he was mentioning that thing about the 13th of June? Well, here's what he's talking about. It says XRP not available after June 13th. I mean, this is from Reddit. You got to keep in mind, you know, where's the source, right? So it says Google does not indeed state XRP price will not be available from the 13th of June. I mean, but you know, people are going to post some of this stuff on, on, um, on reddit all right so i thought i'd share that all right now let's kick it back into what we have and it is xdc all right so shout out to uh salamander the xdc commander this report is in regards to uh, santander uh the xdc i don't know not a commander but you get what i'm saying all right so xdc santander best supply chain finance bank winner Trade Asset, Securitization Company, TASC, powered by Trade Tech. All right. Santander Asset Management runs a trade finance fund where the institutional liquidity pool is um, pulled. I, I said that twice tonight. Where the institutional liquidity is pulled. Excuse me. The notes produced by TASC are purchased by the fund. Santander Asset Management Fund Manager's Guidance. I'm going to blow this up, and you can see this right here for yourself. GTR 2023 Leaders in Trade. It's a winner, best supply chain finance bank, which is Santander. And I'm going to go to the next screen as well. You see some of the, you know, what's mentioned here, right? Uh, Finastra is even there. You have the Lloyds of London, you know. Um, there's Santander Asset Management, heck, even XDC Network, right? Look what's highlighted here. Santander... Asset management runs a trade finance fund where the institutional liquidity is pooled. The notes produced by TASC are purchased by the fund. The SPV, TASC in this case, signs MPAs with each originating bank and following Santander Asset Management Fund's uh, fund manager's guidance, excuse me, the whole model is scalable and secure for all parties. 
as the ultimate goal is to bring a stable source of liquidity and high quality investments to respectively participating originators and investors. Now, this was cool to see this, right? So I thought I'd pull it up for you guys. And, you know, some people are obviously, I guess you could say, appreciate, you know, some of that. Um, there's more in regards to XDC. Why XDC? Well, you got to keep in mind, remember the whole thing with consensus? You know, you had Hara who showed up to consensus 2023. He took some pictures. Um, you know, Stellar was there. A lot of big players are there. Even XDC is there. So XDC Network makes a splash at Consensus 2023. The XDC Network made an impressive show showing at Consensus 2023. And this was even featured on Yahoo Finance. This was uh, published earlier today, this morning, May 4th, 2023 at 7.45 a.m. So it's cool stuff. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to blow this up. I'm going to share this with you guys in regards to this piece from Yahoo Finance. <clears throat> so here it is. And I even have it zoomed in for it. But yeah, XCC Network making a splash. And it states the XCC Network made an impressive showing at Consensus 2023, a prominent cryptocurrency conference with a strong focus on community building, technological innovation, and collaboration. Throughout the event, the XCC team highlighted the unique value of their network, introduced exciting new features, and connected with other projects and developers. Here are the highlights of the XDC's, you know, network's presence at Consensus 2023. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what we want to know about, right? Some of the highlights. Well, it says one of the many achievements of the XCC network at Consensus 2023 was bringing the XDC community together, participants engaged in... Um, meaningful conversations with other projects, sharing insights and ideas and explaining the value of the XTC network. And that's one of the key things, right? What if you had somebody that showed up to this, you know, event in which let's face it, some, pro some people probably did maybe with some, um, you know, uh, VCs that were, you know, wanting to invest in the next big thing, but let's face it on the surface, all they heard about was like old smart contracts of, you know, what, ethereum brings to the table and then you know they all they know is that's too expensive i mean you, you got you got to keep in mind things like this do happen right you meet new people they educate you about like you know for instance xdc is like the ethereum killer okay well how so well they rub elbows they talk so it says this collaborative environment fostered a sense of unity and camaraderie excuse me among members of the xdc ecosystem the XDC network booth attracted high foot traffic thanks to engaging hands-on coding demonstrations provided by Arturo Cantera from Prime Numbers and Quincy Jones from the XDC Foundation. These demos showcase the potential and capabilities of the XDC network. I mean, you got to keep in mind, if a guy who, like I said earlier, you know, you saw you know, Ethereum back in the day, and you were to see like how XTC is going to blow it away. You're going to be pretty impressed. You're going to pay attention. So it says inviting developers and enthusiasts alike to learn more about the project. Pramod Viswanath, what a name, from Princeton University, as we know, is the Ivy League school, and head of the XTC network protocol team gave an insightful presentation with Quincy Jones of the XCC Foundation on the XDC 2.0 update. I mean, that in itself, that's so impressive. I mean, if I showed up to this and I was like, XDC has this particular person from Princeton University, an Ivy League school, um, it, who is the head of the protocol team for XDC, like that in itself would make me want to like, you know, hey, I know about XDC, but I'm going to listen to this guy, right? So, you know, the presentation covered the protocol state-of-the-art Byzantine security, super fast transaction finalization, and built-in forensic monitoring feature. I mean, God, that's a mouthful, but doesn't that sound impressive? Like, you would want to learn more about that. At least I would. Additionally, the presentation introduced the upcoming XDC subnets feature. Now, what is this, right? This is what you should be asking. This will allow for the creation of private subnets. They inherit the security of the XCC 2.0 protocol while leveraging the same tooling and infrastructure available to the mainnet. Quincy Jones continued or concluded the presentation with a discussion 
on automation at scale, focusing on the use case of farmers tokenizing their crops as NFTs. And of course, recently here at CTN, we did a deep dive in regards to, or intro, I should say, intro slash deep dive into Demotra. And some of you guys are into DMTR, right? The tokenization of agriculture, the tokenization of, you know, farming or farmers, right? So there's that. But look what's mentioned here. XDC Community co-founder John McGee gave a, an informative presentation at Protocol Village, introducing the XDC network and basically also outlining the rules for competing for the 50,000 USD grant as part of the Web 3 athon held in conjunction with Consensus 2023. Now, you may be wondering, you know, why do so many of these organizations have these grants? At the end of the day, they have these grants because they want to get key players to join their ecosystem. It ends up being a win-win. And I know this is not a Jasmine segment, but again, like what I mentioned, even with Jasmine, you have grant programs set up. Those make sense because that does what, guys? That helps build your ecosystem. It's a win-win all around. It incentivizes young entrepreneurs, young and old for that, whatever, you know, however old some of these people are. To be innovative, to you know, be creative, you know, shine at these particular events and so on. So I'm I'm glad that they had this. It says additionally, the ecosystem partner Civic contributed 10,000 USD grant on top of what you see here at the 50. I mean, so that's 60,000 right there, um, incorporating their technology into a solution. This gave an opportunity um, for participants to have a chance to face, you know, do face to face discussions with other teams entering the competition as well as introduce themselves to the XCC network ecosystem. I mean, you got to keep in mind, like originally when I myself pitched my game idea to venture panels, it's a different type of thing, right? You have these VCs who just, they're not really all that concerned about how much I'm going to make on the end. They're just wanting to um, sell, the, sell me on the idea of going with them um, to basically make their walls, you know, much more fatter. Also, gotta keep in mind at the time I introduced some of this stuff back in 2015, we didn't have all these particular uh, the grant programs that we have today and so on. And I know you know it's apples and oranges, but it's it's a perfect case. These type of grant programs make sense. It incentivizes projects to you know come over. And how about this? How about projects that were built on Ethereum, all right, or were were built on some other particular outdated blockchain? You want to see more of that. You are seeing more of that. That's the key takeaway. So this part right here, I'm going to read this. It says, the cutting edge security features we've implemented into XCC 2.0 are truly groundbreaking. By designing a system in which attackers are compelled to leave um, indelible traces of their actions, we have effectively guaranteed their discovery by our forensic monitoring service. The level of security backed by rigorous academic research positions at the XCC network um, at the forefront of the blockchain industry, ensuring the utmost protection and trust of our users. In conclusion, the XCC network's presence at Consensus 2023 was marked by a spirit of community building, technological advancement, and collaboration. In a nutshell, people were like impressed with what they saw. You know, um, when you see a great presentation, when it doesn't matter what it is, it's it's about it's how it's presented. It's people can see the passion from XDC's team for the future, that inspires people, right? So, like when you see, you know, by a spirit of community building, I think that's exactly what happened. The event provided an ideal platform for the XDC team to showcase their latest innovations, engage with other projects, and strengthen their ecosystem. And like I've always mentioned, that's one of the key proponents for XDC is being able to strengthen their ecosystem. We could talk all day long about you know, the trade sector and um, and so on. But you got to keep in mind, I mean, there's other things that they're doing with XTC, right? And building that ecosystem up. All they need is just like a couple key players to really get this thing, you know, going. Just kind of like some of you guys in your portfolios, you know. Uh, I was talking to Mike Cornwell, a.k.a. Elon Muff last night, and he was saying, um, you know, all I need is like one or two of these to just really pop off, Right. That same concept that exists with your portfolio um, where, you know, let's say you have, I don't know, 
10 or 20 different crypto projects in your portfolio and you're like you know you're you're convinced you're like yeah my bags are packed right well again you only need one or two of those to really pop off to get you to that next level right that life-changing money but the same rule can apply when it comes to some of these blockchain leaker uh leaders and their their ecosystems right all they need is that same type of concept one or two to really be the shining star of their ecosystem and i always throw out this example Cardano with ADA, Ajax, right? Singularity Net. That was a standout quality project. And as a result, look what happened. You know, we reported it since four cents. That thing went up over 45, 46 cents, maybe even higher. Um, actually, I think it went up to like 60 cents at one particular point. Don't quote me on that, but I know it's at least 45, 46 cents. That is massive. So I want to jump into this next particular part that we have. And, you know, this shows you a little bit from consensus 2020 uh, like it says 2024 i mean you know technically it was 2023 but um it says xcc co-founder um who is this guy right here john McBee, um is sharing an exciting growth of the xcc developer ecosystem and available resources updates on dev tools education the latest protocol enhancements current grants for web3 builders it's all happening at consensus 2023 and i'm gonna blow this up obviously you know there he is he's talking about it and so on um and you know there's a lot to be basically mentioned here and shown so you know i like seeing actual pictures i wish we could have had like a video but nonetheless i mean boom there you go i mean consensus 2023 xdc did stand out how cool is that all right jump back into the comments um Hopefully you enjoyed a little bit in regards to what's going on with XDC because, you know, let's face it, sometimes we don't get news every single day for XDC. Sometimes we do, but sometimes it's not news that really, like, stands out. To me, that stood out. All right. We're going to get further down into the comments, back into it. Um, Salamander says XDC XRP Quant XLM is his top four. Brandon Webb says, Jasmine showing life. Yes, very much so. I mean, you know, we could share that for just a brief bit as well. Um, I want to pull that up real quick. Let's talk about some Jasmine on the chart as I'm getting to the comments. Um, yeah, here we are. Let's go ahead and just share that for a brief bit. So there it is on the watch list. It's, um, it's into the sevens, 0.007218. You know, up 24 hours for the day, um, you know, roughly three and a half, four percent. It's not a lot, right? But on the week, it was up about 10 percent. But, you know, we said that, you know, uh, 0 0.006 was clearly the last big support line. Do we get enough support for the sevens? I don't know. I mean, usually there's some pullback and so on. But even jumping into this real quick, um, even though the volume is down a little bit, still, that's $87 million worth of volume. Are we into the top 100 yet? No, we're not. But man, look at that, guys. Rank of 103. And you better believe that's going to be big news on crypto Twitter when Jasmine reaches the top 100. You know, how cool is that? So I'm going to leave that up for a bit. I'm going to kick it into a little bit more comments that we have. Um, but thank you for being here, Brandon Webb. Guys, is welcome, Brandon Webb. And let's go further down. Um, yeah, it's, it's got zero utility, basically, with PayPay. Marvin Davis, welcome back. XRP, XLM, XTC, GBEX, and HBAR are his top five. Uh, Mitch says that XRP, XLM, XTC is his three kings, the triple X's. Yep. Um, Carson Crypto says he doesn't have XLM, but XRP, yes. And, you know, that's all right. You know, sometimes people mention that. Marvin Davis also says honorable mention, APL, um, Stronghold, which is SHX. Yeah, got some GBEX and XSwap also. Um, I don't have any Floki. Uh, Enu, but um, I know a lot of people do have that. Nelly, there, welcome. He says XRP, XDC, XLM, HBAR, Nexera, Jasmine. Some great choices there. Uh, Crypto Jedi says, Max, check your Twitter DM. Oh, I think that's in regards to um, that thing about June, right? With XRP. Let me just double check my messages real quick. Yep. So we did share that. Um, so that's good stuff. Very, very good stuff. All right. Let's get back into what we have. I uh, want to welcome Mentelect. Hello, is it Mentelect we're looking for? Lionel Richie. Thank you very much for being back here, Mr. Mentelect. Mentelect, I'm just being honest. At some point, I don't know when. 
the whole Lionel Richie thing. It, it, it has to be on some merch, man. It has to be. All right. Mitch states, um, thought so, Tim. All right. You guys have a conversation. My bad. All right. Let's go further down. Um, Crypto China, Future Bricks. Oh, yeah. You better believe it. Um, it. It's already happening. I mean, you have, you know, Conflux. You have technically, you know, even Casper. You have, um, uh, how about this? Quant, you know, we, we talked about the thing with Shenzhou, China with the CBDC. Uh, 15 million people. So there's a little bit of that going on. My thing, though, when it comes to China is the transparency. You know, we might not hear anything significant happen in regards to that. Um, and, it, of course, it's like, well, you know, that that, that that does affect the supply and demand issues. All right. Uh, read this from Mitch. He says he could see meme tokens picking up utility when the whole system goes live and becomes seamlessly interoperable. Um, like SHIB and Doge will be used to purchase items. I'm all for that. I still hold shit, a lot of SHIB and also Doge. All right. Tim Shea says, June 1st is right around the corner. Hong Kong with Beijing to follow. Let me double check the other screen. Make sure I didn't miss anything. All right. I think we're good. Um, oh, I guess there is a few more super chats. So hold on a second. Um, there's one from Henry Brown. We also have a new member, which is oh, it's, it's, uh, thanking Salamander for being a member for a month. He says, Jasmine is the future. Thank you for that. All right, I'll go ahead and highlight Henry Brown's here in a second. Sorry about that, Henry. So I'll read this real quick. Michael Montclair says, home safe now. Well, I'm glad you're safe. What happened? Did you get in a car accident? Is everything okay? I hope you're okay. Um, all right, let me go down to the comment from Mr. Henry Brown. Um, it went away. What is going on? What in the world is going on? This thing went away. This doesn't make any sense. Ah, oh, there it is. All right, hit the like. Oh, it's because I saw Menelik. I, I I was so I was so distracted with Menelik coming into the comments that I was just like Lionel Richie, and then I missed your super chat. So he says, "Uh, it's a two dollar super chat. Thank you, Henry Brown. Hit the like button, and the new date is December. All right, cool stuff. All right, so." I am going to jump back into our outline, um, but I'm going to read a few more comments. Mentalex says, Jasmine is doing a lot of heavy lifting on the charts. It is. It is. It really is. Um, and then I'll, I guess I'll do like two or three more comments. Marvin Davis says, what up, Max, the CTM fam? Thank you for being here. Maybe I already read that. want to welcome Mr. Lambo's crypto talk. Do you guys really think SHIB is done? No, I don't think that at all, personally. Um all right. This is the other way. Oh, my gosh. Because I can tell now because uh, Dave was asking me a question about the students. Ugh. My bad. All right. Well, at least I read some of this stuff, right? Boomer F and Sooner, welcome. And I guess we got a good turnout right now. 61 wonderful, beautiful people, as Larry would say. All right. Let's jump into the next part of our coverage. All right. Um Hold on, what is this? Max, Mr. Max, the Jasmine King Quant. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Mr. Qu All right, Mr. Quant, Mr. Jasmine King. I get what you're saying. Thank you, Larry. All right, we're going to get back into what we have. I'll read this real quick. Boomer F. Sir says he figured out what site earned like 10 Bitcoin years ago. And re Anybody remember BTC Clicks? Unfortunately, I don't remember the username or password. Ooh. I don't remember BTC clicks, but that sounds interesting. In jail out soon, says Jasmine, like to the moon. Welcome. LR, what's your exit strategy? Are you going to sell and how would you go about it? You know, I could talk about that real quick before um, we kick it into the news. I don't mind talking about that. So everybody has, I guess you could say like a different exit strategy. Um, so for me personally, hold on a second. So LR, first of all, welcome. And this is a great question. So for me personally, you know, the way I look at it is like this, right? There is ones that I will take profits off of, obviously. Um, do not allow any influencer, content creator, whatever you want to call us nowadays, to convince you like, look, 
you know, you're going to hear someone say, state this, and especially when it comes to meme coins, now this meme coin season again, if you want to call it that. Some people say it's not. There's going to be at least a few of these guys out there who are going to say, hey, you know what? I'm still one single token. What does that promote? That promotes like diamond handing the heck out of something. Like, you're really going to diamond hand the heck out of a brand new meme token? I'm just saying, I, I, me personally, I'm not doing that. You know, so if you recently got into some meme tokens and coins, I would totally recommend taking some profits how about some of the utility ones yes absolutely if you see anything that's parabolic what is parabolic i'm talking like for me personally it has to be like a minimum of like maybe 120 150 percent but also depends on the position that you came into that particular digital asset you know if you bought bottom here's an example right so if you bought uh the bottom of I, I guess I'll throw out Voyager. I'm not saying to get into Voyager, but here's a perfect example. So me personally, at the beginning of the show, we talked about Voyager. It's sitting around roughly 19, 20 cents. Well, for the last three months, that would technically be the bottom. Now, if you bought, a, for instance, a bag of something like that, where, you know, that's the bottom. And then let's say, I don't know, a few months from now, like summertime or later on to this year, like really picking up momentum. And boom, that thing just went from like 20 cents to um maybe over a dollar because this this has happened when it comes to like for instance voyager last year well my thing would be why wouldn't you want to take your profits off that now you know some people say well you know um i don't have that big of a position i just want to hold it for a long time you gotta do what you gotta do but my thing is i am definitely going to take to take my profits so for me i'm diversified in about roughly 47 to 50 different projects and out of those um if i see any of them depending on you know, my original position on my average DCA, which I highly recommend having a portfolio, find out what your average cost was. So if you're a type of person, which um, I will use Michael Cornwell, for example, and I don't want to sound like I'm all over the place on this, but you know, like he mentions Jasmine, right? So he has, uh, I think maybe one on one of his bags, like on Jasmine, he came in like 21 cents, like actual 21 cents or something like that. But at the same time, he bought bottom on his other bags, right? So he bought, um, you know, sorry, Mike, I, I don't mean to speak for you, but you did mention some of this stuff. So like, let's say on a second bag or third bag, wherever the case be, you know, he buys uh Jasmine, like, let's say a hundred thousand or 200,000. I don't know exactly how much of these, um, let's just say, hypothetically speaking, a hundred thousand, um, at 0 0.0029, you know, that's like the bottom of the bottom. So when we get into a true bull run, it's like, wow. Your average cost is, you know, like probably significantly less than mine. My average cost for Jasmine is, um, I think it's like, you know, 0 0.0058 because my first bag is 0, 0, you know, 065, for instance. The key thing is this, you know, am I going to wait for um, Jasmine to go to like, for instance, a um, dollar and I'm like, oh my God, you know, uh, I'm not going to take profits. It's at a dollar now. Um, you know, I am, uh, I'm going to just diamond hand this even longer because I heard from myself, right. And other people that this is going to go to $17 and 87 cents. Like you saw in the particular video, right? No, I'm not going to do that. If anything, I'm going to take some profits. How much profits? Well, as the saying goes, you know, you, you, for instance, like you cash out maybe half, you keep a, like a moon bag and so on. Now, everybody's going to have a different strategy in regards to that. You know, for instance, uh, we got Salamander. He's got, you know, over 1.5 million um, XDC. One of his strategies that he's mentioned is, you know, that once this thing gets to a dollar, um, he's like, he's good. Maybe he changed his mind. He has the right to change his mind, right? But for him, reaching that goal of a dollar for XDC is, is uh, so much more easier, easily achievable compared to me and other people that might be holding on to XDC to like at least 10 bucks or 20 or higher. But whatever the case be, have your strategy now. So for me personally, my strategy is there will definitely be ones that I you know cash out with or I swap it to a stable coin. Because you got to keep in mind, if you swap to a stable coin and you just keep it there and you don't cash out, then you're not going to be taxed on that. Right. The only time you're taxed or, you know, all the bells and whistles go off, you know, the, the red flags, if you will, um, is when you you transfer that into fiat and then it hits like, for instance, your checking account from your local banking institution or credit unit and so on. Right. You're going to have to, 
you know, tax season comes, you're going to have to account for that. Right. But my thing is this, like, I've always kept a bunch of, um, you know, like, you know, stable coin, like, you know, tether and, and so on uh, on hand for opportunities in the market of buy and bottom. Right. A lot of people do these types of things. And it's, in my opinion, it's good because again, if you just are in the habit of always transferring it to fiat, through your checking account and so on. For one, you're going to get taxed, and two, you can hit with the big fees and so on. Um, or, you know, for some people, you know, you store some of this stuff in obviously cold storage and so on, and ledger and whatnot. So, most of these things, not all, um, I will try to cash out, but not cash out necessarily to like, you know, traditional uh, USD. Because let's face it, I mean, depending on the market in the future, I mean, how much is the US dollar going to be worth? Is it going to be worth, um, you know, 80 cents of the dollar, right? It's not going to be like right at a full dollars, literally, you know, worth 80 cents or possibly less. I don't think this thing is going to zero, but my point is I do have a strategy. There's only about roughly maybe two or three of these cryptos that I will be married to. I know it sounds crazy. You're going to hear other influencers say, don't marry your crypto. Guess what? There are exceptions to the rule for me personally, my exceptions um, and I would call this like a long marriage, if you will, um, in which at some point there's a divorce, you know? So like quant, for instance, for me, I'm, if, if people want to say I'm diving handling, handing that, I don't care. It's my quant. I'm going to do what I want with that quant. And what I'm going to do is I am going to hold on to that sucker to like a hundred thousand dollars of coins. Now, some people are like, well, you're going to be holding onto that forever. Don't care. I full hardly believe at some point in the future, um, at least by 2030, that that is going up to um, like $100,000 a coin. And some people may say I'm nuts. I don't give a crap. That's the way I personally feel about it. Just because I'm a content creator, some people have the attitude that I'm not allowed to have freedom of thought. That's my freedom of thought. I'm sharing that thought. That's what I personally believe. If BTC, that dinosaur technology, was able to go to 69000 with virtually no utility at all, then what about Quant with 14 million, 14.88 million uh, coins, um, and it's, it's not even technically, uh, they don't even say the team It's not, you know, really focused on being cryptocurrency. They look at it as being a operating system for blockchain. So it's blockchain agnostic allows for interoperability, hundred plus blockchains support for 15 SDKs. You see what's going on in the world with them. They're really going to stand out. So with that said, it's like, they are the most, they have more utility than any other. In my opinion, this is my opinion. People can disagree with this. I think that Quant has more utility, more layers of utility compared to anything out there. They're, this, they're the answer to secure smart contract NFTs with QRC721. Um, they are the, the answer to um, tokenization on a particular platform. What platform is that? LCX, right? How do we know that? With Leo X, right? So, you know, uh, the first ever QRC20 token minted on, you know, that particular platform of the Liechtenstein exchange. We could go on and on about some of this stuff, but we saw recently with the CBDC. So for me personally, yeah, I'm looking to, you know, you better believe I'm looking to hold that for darn near forever. And uh, once it goes up to hundred thousand dollars per coin, am I going to earn a certain amount of interest on that? We'll find out. Am I going to earn a certain amount of interest on my XRP? In the future, like, you know, what Lewis Jackson, Crypto Lulu, some of these other guys were mentioning, right? Could very well be the case. So am I really going to want to cash out to fiat? And how much is fiat going to be worth at the time? If it's USD, the US dollar, am I going to really cash out that significant amount of XRP? Let's say it does go to 10000 a coin um, and, and basically transfer it to something that's worth, worth uh, I don't know, let's be nice and just say, you know, um, 90 cents per you know, on, on the dollar, right? It's not even a full dollar. It's 90 cents. We said 80 cents earlier, right? Probably not. I'm probably not going to want to do that. I want to find out what's available at that time after we have regulatory clarity um, and what ones are going to be out there that is going to give me a, a decent yield, right? A stable yield on the, the product or the service, if you will. Um, and, and I know a lot of people say that's hypothetical, but in reality, is it? Because in the future, with on-demand liquidity and so on, and this an answer to Nostra Vasa, I mean, you see all this stuff going on, the collapsing of banks and so on. That creates, let's be honest, guys, that much more demand for some of these particular digital assets. So if a lot of this is coming off of the exchanges and they're, they're making it that much more scarce, perfect example, XRP, then to me, that's going to have a high, uh, it has to have a high value. 
per coin. So if it has to have a high value per coin, well, is it going to be certain financial institutions are going to pay me for holding that asset in the form of interest could very well be. And then as far as the whole concept of like, okay, you get paid on this interest. Do I get paid in a particular stable coin? And if anything, guys, here's the thing on tonight's video, you're going to see later on, or you may see it tomorrow. We're going to, it, it gets into some of the concept from stellar in regards to this answer. It's in regards to the AU double D uh, and also the CBDCs for Australia. Um, but there's a lot of things going on. So, but my thing is, this: like Filecoin. You better believe on my second bag of Filecoin, like my moon bag, you know, Filecoin, I believe went up to $140 plus and so on, um, could exceed that in the future. Right. So, but on, on the short term, Filecoin is one of my power swaps, right. To accumulate more quant, to accumulate more XDC, XLM, uh, XRP, HBAR, you name it. Right. But what I'm saying is that's an example of one that I do cash up, you know? So there's, there's all sorts of different examples for my exit plan, but I definitely do have an exit plan. Um, but as far as in the future, this whole case of, you know, uh, four year cycles, we may be at the very end of that this next time around with the four year cycle concept. Why is that the utility run? So if you're new to our channel and so on, we're more than glad to share some of this info in regards to all these concepts of utility runs, uh, what's going on here, you know, soon in, in the market and so on when it comes to, you know, will Bitcoin go to new all time highs? Will Ethereum as well? We understand that currently speaking, those do represent about 81% of the overall crypto market. But um, you better believe that at some point, maybe not necessarily tomorrow, we will have a utility run. And it's the projects, or I should say the products or companies and services that are connected to distributed ledger technology and so on that built in a bear market, making those partnerships, in my opinion, that really are going to stand out. Which ones are those? Well, for me personally, they are, you know, the quants of the worlds, the, the ripples, the stellars, the hederas, you know. Um, I can even throw jasmine into that mix because the way I look at it is all the complaints that they got, you know, oh, this looks like a blank, uh, blatant rug pull. Understood. Look what partnerships they got. Look what they were building. And this next phase that we're entering, for instance, with Jasmine, a new secure PC, and it's an English version. That simply makes sense. I want to get behind something like that. So that's a long explanation. But um, yeah, I, I've had an exit plan for the longest time. Um, even when I first got into altcoins, uh, basically, I had the attitude like, wow, I can't believe this. You know, I I turned 10K and 120K, you know, some of you guys don't know the story. So I'll share this just real quick. 300 to Doge, 22K um, because I came in and Doge at a, at a penny. Um, Shiba Inu, you know, uh, five, five zeros, uh, seven, nine, nine, seven, nine, eight, something like that. Bought over a billion of those in 11 X. Um, so 8K to 88K. And then Kronos was my third top performer of 2021, $1,700 worth. Um, you know, came to 10 grand. That's a few other profitable ones during that year, but those were my three top ones. So my thing is I could have chose to settle, but I, I said to myself, my exit plan, I'm not going to listen to some of these guys who are saying, um, uh, diamond hand the heck out of this. You know, I didn't sell a, you know, you, you've seen it. I'm sure you have at some point, these guys who say, I never sold a, a single coin. I never sold a single token. You know what? That is irresponsible. You know, because people like new people follow these guys and they're like, well, if this guy is not selling, then obviously I shouldn't sell because, you know, again, it's part of doing more of your own research by all means do what's best for you and your family. But if you're convinced that you do need a quote unquote hodl, and I hate to use that term as well, because it's kind of out, you know, outdated and outplayed by now or at, um, overused, I should say, have the attitude that you got to do what you got to do, what's best for you and your family. Um, set certain goals. And how about this, guys? Just because you see a certain project go to all-time highs, if you understand some of these cycles, you'll come to the conclusion that you could always get back into the project. Who says you can't get back into it? So I, I think it's, it's very wise that we all have some form of exit plan. Your exit plan may be very different from mine. My exit plan consists of doing all sorts of crazy things. You know, once I achieve millionaire status, which I believe I will, uh, within the next, you know, four to five years max, 
my next big thing is, okay, now I have this type of money. I still will invest in crypto. I will be looking into projects that are still being innovative. Where are some of these projects going from Web3 to where they're you know, going here in the, in the near fu future? Is it going to be all focused on AI? I think that would be the next big phase for crypto, personally speaking. So with that said, there's still going to be opportunity in the future, even when we become a millionaire status. So understand this, right? And you got to see it in the market all the time for yourself. And it's happening daily, right? You'll see big whales put a big position in, you know, this particular cryptocurrency, or you see ETH whales, right? With those type of whales, what is the consistent thing you probably notice? It's that they're not focusing on like what we're focusing on, which is a 10x or a 100x, right? Or, you know, in some cases, a thousand X. They don't need to do that for the same reason why salamander doesn't need to focus on ten dollars or twenty dollars or you know as high as eighty dollars per xdc like uh, richard common sense cryptos mentioned that we could get there eventually no all he has to do is focus on a one dollar xdc he gets to go to the promised land but as a millionaire you don't have to focus on the 10x you don't have to focus on the 100x why because at that particular point, you can accumulate so much more of these digital assets, right? You can whale it up as the saying goes. And then from there, you only have to focus like on a 2X, but you can consistently do 2Xs over and over and over. I know it sounds crazy, but I want to state this. In the future, I'm not a fortune teller, but it's just a given. There will be people that will be still in this game of crypto. Uh, I know I will be, even in 10 years plus. And my goal will no longer be to be just millionaire status. I might want to make it multi-million dollar status or even billionaire status. I got big dreams just like the next guy. I ain't going to be able to accumulate or um, achieve some of these dreams just by settling, for instance, like in the past two years ago for 10K and 120K. Don't get me wrong. That's, you know, I'm, I never made 120 grand in my life. I'm a, you know, I teach. Teachers don't make much. Um, so my key thing was, all right, what do I got to do? I got to obsess over crypto. I got to stay up. I got to, you know, I got to read the living crap out of like these things. I got to take deep dives. I got to find out, you know, are these solid projects and so on. And I have done that. And so, you know, a lot of you guys do some of this stuff too. But whatever the case be, if you've done the research and you're convinced that the project is solid, stand by that research that you've done. And if it's a good solid team, you know, I'm not talking about necessarily like an ERC-20 token that just got minted and, you know, uh, looked like it was put together by a five-year-old. No, I'm talking about real solid utility projects. The ones that you've seen in a bear market who continue to build and they keep expanding and they keep getting those partnerships and so on. And the rest of the world is complaining, oh, look at all this sideways consolidate. It's not doing nothing. It's doing something. It strengthens the asset. Perfect example, if you're new to our channel, we cover quite a few different projects that have done well in the bear market and where they're at today. You know, XDC is an example of one. You know, we cover that, I think, slightly below two cents. Um, I think it's gone to close to five cents. Casper is another one. Uh, we cover that since roughly right around, what, guys, like two cents. It's right close to six cents now. Singularity Net, we talked about many times. Four cents, 46 cents. Shout out to XXI Gaming. I don't even know if he's here. You he mentioned Stratos. That's a good project. Um, and even Pepe. I mean, you guys want to, you know, you guys mentioned Pepe, AI, Doge. But the whole point is this it's not just about utility and stuff like that. The key thing is we have a very intelligent community here. They pay attention to what's going on. It's opportunity. Whatever opportunity you see, cease that opportunity. You know, that's at the end of the day, that's what you got to do. Like, you know, it, whether it's a power swap shifting from one asset to the other. Um, those are all smart things to do, but yeah, I think we all have maybe a different, different definition as far as an exit plan. My exit plan is I'll only marry like three or four cryptos. The rest of them, you better believe I'm taking profits, but I'm going to swap them into certain, um, stable coins. So I don't just get hit with crazy taxes and so on, but don't get me wrong. There will become a point where I have to put some things into Fiat. Maybe we have some big bills and stuff like that. Got to do what I got to do, right? You know, as the saying goes, we got to eat. So that's a long explanation. I know it's kind of off kilter. I'm probably way behind the comments now. Um, but that's the way I look at it. You know, you, you got to have a plan. Um, use an Excel spreadsheet. Write this stuff down. Keep track of it. Um, 
maybe use a free uh, CMC portfolio. I would highly recommend that. Have a watch list, star up that stuff, have your favorites, you know, um, and then, you know, add in, you know, literally write on a ledger, you know, hey, I bought, for instance, for me, Falcon, I bought bottom, you know, uh, my average, I bought two bags. So my average was 483. You know, the first one was 478 and the second one was 482. So my average came out to like roughly 483 ish. Right. Write that down, the date, all that stuff. Pay attention to graphs because while everyone else is just focused on the 24 hour chart, the seven day chart and so on, it's not about that. It's about, all right, what was the bottom for this project within the last three months? Right. You may think, well, why not do the whole year? Go by the three months, because if you're a swing trader and that's a power swap opportunity, go by the three months and then also find out, is this project, do they, what's going on in their community? Is, is there a new positive catalyst coming out? Yes, there is. Oh, they got this partnership with XYZ company, blah, blah, blah. That's important. Or Polygon, ZKEVM, 300% increase in volume. Why was that significant? Because other developers are jumping ship from other platforms. Which ones? Ethereum, so on, to build on Polygon. That's a big deal. But Max, the price didn't move. Right, because it was a recent hack, right? That does affect everything. But the key thing is have a portfolio, write stuff down, average price, all that stuff. Stand by the research that you've done and don't panic. At the end of the day, don't panic on any of this stuff. It, crypto can be a very emotional thing. Don't get me wrong. People will panic. But if you believe solidly in the project, I'm talking about good quality projects, HBAR, Hedera, you know, all that stuff, right? You know, for me personally, just because I see something bad happen with Hedera and we did see something bad happen recently, right, within the last few months, did I go out and dump my position? No. If anything, I recognize the, the power of the DCA. All right. So if anything, I'm going to kick it back into the comments. I did see Jay, uh, a.k.a. Jose, um, here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I am probably so far behind on the comments. It's unbelievable. So this was at 733. Um, unfortunately, I'm probably going to have to wrap things up in the next, I don't know, probably 20 minutes. I mean, I know we have a good turnout, and I do appreciate that. So any one wonderful, beautiful people is uh, – Larry would say, right? Um, I'll read a couple more comments and then I'll try to kick it back to what we have. Cars and Crypto says, it doesn't have to hit your bank account. Uh, you've been taxed, not one single penny went into my account. That's a good way of looking at it. Um, I like Calvin being here. Thanks for being here. He says, sup, gents. Reads like uh, Coinbase is fighting back. I'll be interesting. it would be interesting to see how you know things go with the SEC. I agree. Asuka, uh, one, two, nine, welcome back. Great looking avatar as usual in Australia. Once you swap between one token to another or sell it, that is when you get tax, capital gains tax. Yeah, that's a good point. So that's another reason why, for instance, I use KuCoin because, again, you know, they don't really report on a lot of that stuff, right? And uh, you could say, you know, this is where the argument comes from a person like Elizabeth Warren. They want to monitor that. The only wallet that she's for is one that they can have control over. Um, I'm just throwing that out there. You know, that's one of the main reasons why I deal a lot with, for instance, KuCoin um, compared to like, for instance, uh, Coinbase and so on. So, you know, it's, it's teaches on. Yeah, exactly that. My freedoms. So uh, GZ says agreed with on Q&T price to be high. Yeah, thanks, guys. Um. Jay or Jose, sorry, I double smashed the like button just to make sure it went through. <laughs> All right. Um, LR, thank you for the last question. What exchanges or trading platforms you would use due to selling limits on certain exchanges because some exchanges are 50K a day? What do you re recommend? Um, you got you to gotta keep in mind, it also depends on, you know, when you fill out some of that information, right? So, you know, obviously when it comes to KuCoin, you know, they're really KYC friendly, but if you were to volunteer a little bit more information as, as far as like your income and so on, you will have some of those limits increase if you could back that up with like actual, you know, uh, I guess you could say tax forms and statements and so on. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, I'm still sticking with, uh, you know, KuCoin. Um, I still do a little bit of crypto.com um, here and there. Uh, the only thing I don't like about crypto.com is obviously you guys know that uh, their, their prices are significantly higher on the asset. But at the same time, when you go to sell, you still have a little bit higher. So there is that, it, you know, it's not exactly like a full catch 22. Um, but, you know, as far as KuCoin, it's low fees. Um, 
you know, you can do, for instance, if you're going to do this, you know, the, the you know, was it buy and sell orders? It's very easy to use if, you know, once you get used to it. Some people criticize KuCoin and say it's too hard to use. Honestly, once you get used to it, it's a, it's a piece of cake. And uh, the way they got things set up and once you can, you know, follow what you have. And knowing that, I mean, it's, it's really easy to transfer things from, you know, from that exchange to Ledger and so on. So uh, there's no big complaints in that regard. But um, I don't know if that answers all your questions. I'm just trying to kind of get to some of this because I, I know we have a great turnout tonight and I'm really thankful for that. But at the same time, uh, I do want to watch the last bit of the game. All right. So I'm going to read just maybe a couple more comments. Um, and then I'm going to kick it into the next part of what we have just real quick. Uh, Casper is pumping. Let's see what's going on with Casper real quick. Um, let me see. All right, Casper. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, here it is on the on the chart. Let's pull this up real quick. Up about 14.5% on seven day, and then currently on a 24 hour, it's up 4.22%. One hour is uh 0.61%. But I mean, we're now in the sixes. I mean, that's pretty impressive. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna kick it back into our coverage. Um, we have a little bit more that I want to share. I'll probably go maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes max on this. Um, so we talked about XDC and was glad to share that. Let's jump into Nixera because it's been a while since we shared some Nixera news with you guys. So as you can see right here, uh, shout out to Al Kim, uh, Kimia. Um, he shared this, right? Nixera with the Alliance block. It's another level. And it shows right here some of this info that I want to get into. All right. And this was originally reported on May 3rd, which is yesterday. Alliance Blocks, Nixair ID, joins Worldwide Web Consortium aiming to shape future sovereign identities. Now, you may be wondering, what the heck is this? All right. Well, like it shows right here. All right. Alliance Blocks groundbreaking self-sovereign identity issuance and verification solution, Nixair ID, has joined the Worldwide Web Consortium the preeminent international web three standards organization. Now you may be wondering why is this so significant? It is significant for the same reason why quant being teamed up with the IETF, AKA the internet engineering task force, who was the pioneers of the internet, right? Why that's so significant. So in regards to next era, we know, for instance, like it says, it's a self-sovereign identity issuance and verification platform that empowers companies to seamlessly onboard users to Web3 using self-custodial or custodial wallets. It streamlines complex compliance workflows while safeguarding users' identities and assets. To this end, the solution already complies with W3C's established standards for decentralized identifiers and verifiable credentials. In the past, you know, we have reported that this really, really sh helps, you know, Alliance Block shine, right? The concept of the Nexera ID. It's a next level ID, you know? I stated in the past that don't be surprised if you see this being like the um, the standard, if you will, when it comes to passports in um, Central Europe, Western Europe, and, you know, other parts of the world, right? Um, as we progress through this concept of, you know, a a decentralized world and web three and so on, this could really, really make Alliance block stand out. And, 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 you know, just like tokenizer, when he was on the show uh, over a month ago, you know, he pointed out, well, this is just one of many things that Nixera provides. So it says WC three is a global technical consortium that enables companies, projects, and the public to come together and develop innovative web technologies. WC three is best known for pioneering, I could just mention what the IETF of crying out loud. I can't make this stuff up for pioneering technical web technologies like HTML and CSS and is led by the World Wide Web inventor Tim Berners Lee. Its members actively contribute to developing fundamental web technologies, establishing a framework for technological ethics and exchanging ideas with industry and research community experts. I mean, if you have something that's original, which obviously Nexera does, and you're teaming up with some of these industry and community experts who are, for crying out loud, pioneers of the whole thing. For me personally, I would want to learn more about that. Enter in Nexera. says, quote, we are extremely excited to be working with fellow WC, 
or W3C member organizations in the development of interoperable web standards, bringing expertise to help shape the principles of sovereign identity, which can only be done by collaborating with other industry leaders in these fields, says Alliance Block founder and CEO Rashid Ajaja. W3C has an impressive membership list of 450 global leaders like, listen to this, guys, are you kidding? Microsoft, Apple, Ethereum, meh, and Coinbase. Nextera ID will proactively collaborate with industry leaders to foster and promote the standardization. I even, I didn't even make, see what I mean? Did I make this up? No. They're looking to set the standard, right? So the standardization of decentralized identifiers, DID, and verified credentials, VC on the web. Does that not sound bullish to you? It sounds pretty bullish to me. I mean, this whole concept of the FUD that they got in the past of, um, you know, oh, I'm going to get out of Nexera because, uh, or uh, Alliance Block because, you know, um, that, you know, the Bonk Dow hack and so on, right? Man, you know, that transition, they did a very good job with this. And, you know, if anything, a lot of you guys are even back in the profits in regards to this. I'm not yet, but I'm looking like, it's looking like I will be. So it says web, um, excuse me, next ID will benefit from access to a vast network of leading industry players and provide their technical expertise to WC3 while collaborating on improving and developing new standards for the digital identity space. Decentralized identifiers became an official web three standard last year. Did you know that? Right. Again, enter in Nexera. They are designed to give users and organizations greater security and privacy by allowing, and here's the juicy stuff, them to establish and manage their digital identities across technological boundaries. Verifiable credentials, another W3, W3C standard, enable users to offer digitally encrypted and secure evidence during their authentication processes. Now, in regards to Nexera, right? Their technology utilizes a programmable smart wallet to store digital assets and identity information securely as and is built on top of the open source Alliance Block Nexera protocol. Enterprises and consumers will both benefit from Nexera ID. Again, this is some of the key stuff, right? Enterprise customers can easily expand into Web3 and adopt Web3 with Nexera ID solutions. You know, you talk about the whole concept of like, well, where's the utility? Boom, there's some of that utility, right? They have a lot of utility, by the way. The Web3 smart wallet and self-sovereign identities, which is SSI, can be integrated into businesses' infrastructures, enabling them to onboard users and validate their compliance with regulatory rules. So in the past, you know, we talk about, for instance, you know, what's going on with LCX? Are they regulatory compliant? You better believe your sweet aunt that they are. How about Nixera? Right with Alliance Block, same type of concept. They're all about that regulatory compliance. So where do we go? Where's the next big step forward for Nixera? You know, Alliance Block. That's a great question. And basically, the way I look at it is like this: this right here. Consumers can create safe and secure smart wallet accounts with Nixera ID using their email or social media information, similar to the current Web2 practices. Wallets can be managed using biometrics. Apple ID accounts, and even Google accounts. In addition, users can further secure their smart walls with spending limits and recovery rules. Now, I'm not going to get into the whole thing about, you know, the World uh, Wide Web Consortium, WC3. You can more than nerd it out if you want. But one thing I will mention from there is their vision, all right? So if you're wondering what the heck is their vision, well, their vision for one web brings together thousands of dedicated technologists representing more than 400 member organizations and dozens of industry sectors. WC3 is a public interest nonprofit organization incorporated in, believe it or not, the United States of America, which kind of sounds crazy, right? It's led by a board of directors and employing a global staff across the globe. Now, I just want to state this. I was more than glad to share this because to me personally, this is where you hear people state that quant, or I should say that Nixera, you know, Alliance Block is Quant's younger cousin. That's a perfect example. Again, like I gave you earlier, when it comes to Quant, understand, you know, Gilbert Verdian, um, he has a, he, a lot of say or uh, has a lot of, 
I guess you could say rubs elbows with some of these guys from the IETF. Uh, they work together. They recognize quant, what they're building and so on. Right. So if the IETF is, I should say, if they are um, the pioneers of the internet, even before it was even called the World Wide web or the internet, right. Dating back, all, I believe all the way to 1985, 86, some, somewhere in that particular range. So you have that, right. What about, for instance, Nick Sarah? It's consistently been referred to as Quant's younger cousin, as Tim Shea would say. Other people call it like the little brother, whatever you want to call it. I've seen that across the board. Boom. That's the perfect example because of W3C, the World Wide Web uh, Consortium, right? So is there a bigger opportunity when it comes to Nick Sarah compared to Quant? My answer is no, but there you, you better believe that there could be just as much opportunity, especially at what? Their current market cap. Now, if you're wondering about their market cap, we're going to bring that up for just a brief moment. And I want to show this to you on the share, just in case you don't know about Alliance Block. And again, I'm not sponsored by Alliance Block. We're not sponsored by anybody, to be honest. Um, the research speaks for itself. But look at this, all right? They have gone from, you know that time of the, you know, the, the V2, I mean, some people call it V2. I just call it like, you know, let's face it, it's now at Nixera. Um, but, you know, I remember this was into the, you know, the four and a half, five cent range. Now we're up into the sevens. And here it is, basically. It's currently got a, a ranking of 405. Um, you know, it's, it's down about 9% nine, 9 and so on. But again, like I was saying, guys, it's all about building and making partnerships when things might not look like, the greatest right so let me show you this right here for the last month i mean it's kind of had its ups and downs um we understand that was about three months ago the some of the big things that happened recently um but one another thing i want to show you is you know just because the the volume is down there's still opportunity here personally i wouldn't be surprised at any moments notice especially after this report of you know the web worldwide web consortium that this thing could definitely pop off that's just the way i personally look at it um on top of that you know it has a max supply of only 850 million uh of the uh the tokens and the total supply matches that you gotta keep in mind when it was albt right this was one that uh had over i think it was like a billion so they already subtracted about 150 million from that supply you know going to this uh, unofficial V2, right? To, you know, uh, from ALBT to Nixera. So I want to share you guys that. Um, and the other thing I was going to mention just real quick in regards to Nixera is if you're wondering what markets you can get on, if you're interested in this particular project, like, you know, me, I got off a of KuCoin, you know, but it is on Uniswap if you choose to go that route. It's even on Mexi. There's some of these other ones, but I'm not familiar with BitTrue or Hotbit. I mean, I'm aware of them, but I don't use them. Um, so there, there basically is, and it was nice to give you guys that particular update in regards to, um, Nick's era. All right. So I think we have some Jasmine news, but I'm not gonna be able to have enough time to get into that. Let me see. Let me see what, what the score is real quick. Maybe I can go just a tad bit more. Um, oh boy. You know what? Um, forget that game. Yeah, I guess I'll stick around a little bit longer. 110 to 80? My God. I guess you know, Clay Thompson is just absolutely torching the Lakers as we speak. All right. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't I don't need to watch them just get their butt whooped. You know, like this, this game is going to be over quick. So that's all right. I don't need to – I'm not going to watch that. I'm not going to watch a blowout. I want to watch a good game. Um, well, I guess I'll stick around. And, yeah, I will stick around a little bit longer. So how about that? I will not be watching the game. All right. Um, we're going to get into the next bit of our coverage here in a bit. Uh, so we covered Alliance Block. The next bit of coverage we have um, is going to be LCX. And then after that, we have some HBAR, some big news from HBAR. We have some Casper, some Jasmine. So anyway, we're going to get into some of these comments. Um, and let's see where we're at. I think there's quite a bit. Sorry if um, I skipped a bunch of comments. I didn't mean to. I uh, hope that we took it personally. Um, but, yeah, thanks for being here, Calvin, all you guys, right? Muff says, Max Tag 29X Pepe. All right, let me see what's going on with his Pepe Le Pew. Um, Mr. Pepe. All right, here's 
here's Mr. Muff, all right? And he wants us to show this, which is fine. So look at this, guys. Here's from Mike Cornwell, a.k.a. Elon Muff. He says he's been killing it, absolutely killing it on his PayPay. Let's blow that up. So, you know, he did he did this on a Mexi Futures, PayPay USDT Perpetual. He went long, you know, 100x. So that was a 100, you know, 132.54%. My God. And then um, look at this. My goodness. This was today earlier, right? Look at the date. May 4th. Wow. 738% up. I mean, for you guys that, you know, know this stuff, I mean, you're doing really well. Look at this. Oh, my God. Let's blow this up a little bit more. Mr. Mike Cornwell doing big things. All right. Um, geez, man. I mean, uh, wow. Up 2,250% total on that floating PNL on the perpetual, right? Um, that's crazy. That's insane. Well, congratulations to you, man. I mean, can I blow this up a tad bit more? Hold on. I guess that's too big. Well, not really. I'll just leave it right there for a second. Wow. That is insane. I will leave that up there for a brief moment. My God, Mr. Michael Cornwell. Mr. Elon Muff. See? Sup, Muff. All right. Um, Cars and Crypto says it doesn't have to hit your bank account. Oh, I read that earlier. My bad. Um, all right. We're going to go further down to the comments because I got a lot to catch up on. A lot to catch up on. Uh, but glad to have you here, Mr. Jose. AKA J. Um, I did answer this earlier. Doggy style Inu, crypto meth, and useless Ethereum token. Doggy style you know, you know, With so much drama in the LBC, it's kind of hard being Mr. Jose double D O double G, but he somehow, some ways, keeps on DMing Maximus like every single day. May Max look into this project that is going to squeeze through two in the morning. No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to do that. All right. <laughs> Jay says, uh, rug pull token. Totally a rug pull. Tarp. Yeah, I remember that. I never got into that, though. GG says, there is no right or wrong way to invest. Just, you know, uh, it, yeah, just do your own research. Yeah, absolutely. The research says, should basically speak for itself. Thank you, Calvin. Appreciate you, man. Always appreciate your T6 glider. Little known fact, right? I'm, I'm sure some of you guys know this. If you've seen like Tora, 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 or if you watched um, Robert Conrad, my, my, little known fact, my dad's, you know, he's in the, the rehab place trying to get better um, uh, for physical therapy. Uh, so his all-time favorite show, even though it got canceled after like two seasons, is Baba Black Sheep, Black Sheep Squadron, starring the late, great Robert Conrad. Well, in that show, they actually used T6 trainers and they repaint them and they looked a lot like, let's face it, Mitsubishi Zeros. I don't know if a lot of people knew about that, but you probably knew about that, Calvin, because you got the T6 glider there. But I thought I'd mention that to you. Uh, also, Tor Tor Tor, they did a lot of that, you know, repainting um, uh, those T6s to make them look like Zeros. Um, of course, in the movie Pearl Harbor, they actually used ray tracing. Let I me mean, use that example yesterday. Um, this is an old comment, but he says, uh, you sold all your quant and went all in on Luna Celsius. This is you and your trolling. <laughs> you gotta keep in mind guys, J A K Jose. He does a lot of trolling. That's okay. Um, yeah, I, I bet you did. I did my research by watching some YouTube. videos. <laughs> that video game coming soon, Max. Thanks, Brian. Um, someday it will. And hopefully, you know, um, I'm not going to do the first-person shooter thing. I'm going to do the 3D turn-based strategy because, I mean, that was my all-time favorite game. Hogs of War, man. I love that game. I just absolutely love that game. I mean, I could – I wouldn't mind having a buddy come over tonight or, you know, on Friday or something like that. Maybe on my birthday, like, I'll have some friends come over and we'll play some Hogs of War or something. I don't know. They probably don't want to do that, but it's all right. 
All right, let's go further down. Uh, in, jail, out soon. I see an opportunity in the graph. Yeah, I do too. Um, the way I look at it is I am so glad. I have no complaints when it comes to the graph. I bought Bob on the graph for right around six cents, and I'm up like a few hundred percent on that. I'm, I'm like, I'm glad. Audio bought the bottom on that too. Um, Jose says, Trias founder is an Oxford PhD and was head of Oxford cloud research team. Uh, they employ 80, 50, which are engineers, and 20 of them are PhDs with a max supply of 10 million. Huh. All right. Um, let me go further down into the comments. Craig says, does anyone think Pepe will go to five zeros, uh, 15, trying to get back in? I have no idea. I'm, I'm not into it. I, you know, if I would have got into it, I would have tried to get onto it, like maybe like day one or two, like some of you guys, um, I probably missed it on that and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Um, blockchain six, six, three says he bought somber today. Oh, cool. You seized the opportunity. It made sense. Period. Awesome. Congratulations. And you know what guys, let's give a warm welcome to, um, blockchain six, six, three. Hope to see more of you. Any questions, comments you have, uh, feel free to drop them, but glad to have you here. And I'm going to read a few more comments, kick it back to what we have. Uh, Triple C says Makucoin Maxiness. <laughs> All right. You bought it on Uphold? Huh. Pray Connor says the fair tax is the only way to run the USA. We can cap the hidden sales tax to 15% with a 0.1% tax on all dividends and to make a USA approved crypto. A buy and sell tax of 0.1% to 0.01% to a US treasury. Well, I'm glad you got it figured out because you want to know something? Our elected officials surely don't have it figured out, and they're just bickering back and forth between both parties, and we don't ever get Jack Dilly squat done. Um, here's another one from Craig. While in Congress each year um, or to set the tax rate from 0.1% to 0.01%, that is their job. All right. Uh, how about just a couple more comments? Good night to Din G. How long ago was this? Not too long ago. Well, you're probably gone. Have a great night. And, uh, Craig Connor says he took half profit on Jerry, like the Springer token. I saw that one. BNB waiting for it to drop. Then one more buy. You will see how many weeks it takes. Huh. Interesting. Now, yeah, there. Next area is going to blow you away. I, I really feel I feel like that's the case. Um, and I also looking at it from the perspective, like you know, I, I want to stack more of like some of these other ones I have that are part of my top five. Don't get me wrong. I mean, who doesn't want to do these things? But at the same time, like looking at it, like, all right, well, we got ten percent pull back on, you know, next era. Maybe I should try to get a second bag, but that's going to exist with quite a few things. You know, I added up all the stuff that I technically want to get into. Um, or want to buy more of. And I, you know what? I, I added it up last time. It was 23 grand for all the ones that I'm like, okay, I need to get a bag of this. I need to get a bag of that. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, and then what happens from there? Do I decide, okay, uh, I'm still not satisfied with this? I mean, for me personally, I have got to set my limits. Um, you guys, some of you guys know what I'm talking about. Shout out to Mike Cornwell. I mean, like, sometimes it's like, dang, man, like, hold off a little bit. Like, you know, it's, it, so for me, it's like it has to be something like monumental, like Algorand crashes to like 10 cents or something like that. Or I know we always joke around lately about Cypherium and, and I'm not trying to fuddy anybody Cypherium because I have Cypherium myself. But to be honest, I am looking at Cypherium. I'm looking at like from the price, like, you know, is that was it uh, slightly under two cents? If it crashes below a penny, you better believe I got to pick up a second bag of that for the what is, you know? Some big things are coming up here soon. Could we be wrong? I don't know. But I'm willing to take a chance on a second bag at one cent. I'm just weird like that. Some people are like, man, if it's crashing to that, why would you want to get into that? I'm just saying there's something to be said about assets that become distressed and buying the bottom. I'll leave it at that. All right. We're going to read one more comment and uh, or two. Uh, my ALBT Classic. All right. Uh, from Triple C, uh, Crypto Jedi says, I finally accumulated 10 Nexera, aka Quant Jr. 10 Nexera, like literally just like 10 tokens. Hmm. Well, 
you got to do what you got to do, my friend. Here's to your 10 Nixera. All right. Um, let's go ahead and unshare that. Let's kick it back to what we have on our coverage. All right. So on this next segment, we're going to jump into LCX. So you may be wondering, LCX, really? Finally? Yes, finally, some LCX. Smash that like if you haven't done so already. Let's jump into some LCX. Z Lichtenstein exchange. Oh, I hate it when you say that voice, Max. I cannot stand it when you do that voice. Yeah, well, you know, what can I say? All right. So this guy, Francesco, says every year, Regardless of the market situation, the blockchain industry continues to gain popularity on a large scale. However, in most cases, the moments in which we talk about it most are those related to big frauds. Example, what? The FTX case, right? Absolutely. You know, this whole concept of, you know, uh, elected officials in Congress, like, for instance, Elizabeth Warren basically wanting to ban crypto. Okay. Um, you know, it's like, yeah, the FTX situation was a bad thing, right? Sam Bankman Free is a is a bad dude. But you know, I didn't see uh people giving up on stocks after you know Bernie Madoff, right? Was people looking to ban stocks for Bernie Madoff? No, of course not. It's called there's bad players. You know, you're not gonna go punish the, the innovators or solid, you know, blockchain projects and so on. It's, it's absolutely ludicrous, right? So in this particular thread. This guy has some examples. I want to get into this pretty good. So he says, basically speaking, that, you know, take, for example, the FTX case. Many take it for granted that Binance today is the best solution for holding their digital assets. But did you know that Binance used to be um, a joint venture with LCX? And if you guys remember, we had, maybe he's watching right now. I don't know. Shout out to Rue Black. We probably should get him back on the show, but he mentioned this. He pointed out when we had him on a guest on the show. So that's what this guy's talking about, right? So shout out to Rue. Um, but yeah, they had a joint venture with LCX. And it says, but after a while, they they became detached. Uh, they had like some disagreements and so on. And here remains only LCX that has decided to do things right from day zero, right? Or we should say day one, you know? And to get further into this, he says, to align his products and his services with one of the most robust regulatory frameworks you can rely on today, which is LCX. This is why I feel as though, you know, they are such a big player uh, in the future. You better believe that once we get that clarity, you will have like the black rocks of the world and so on work with LCX. Right. And the way I look at it is, you know, I'm so glad to be able to finally have hold held lcx came in a little bit late compared to some of you other guys that came in at like you know two cents and so on but you know i'm not sweating you know and on top of that look at what it says here Liechtenstein crypto exchange Liechtenstein crypto exchange i've said it twice was founded in 2018 and is headquartered in vaduz Liechtenstein. as the name suggests it is a cryptocurrency exchange developed with the idea of attracting institutional investors to a regulated platform hence like the black rocks of the world and so on um, look at this part. And, you know, this guy posted this about nine hours ago. So, I mean, it is good stuff, you know, at least I think so. It says with already eight licenses approved by the financial market authority, FMA under the blockchain act and awards from the blockchain research Institute, LCX operates and offers its services within the existing regulatory framework of the Liechtenstein blockchain act, FMA, um, of Liechtenstein. When we get further into this, it says, in addition to being a highly regulated exchange, LCX offers products and services such as the custody, custody, excuse me, of digital assets, CFI and DeFi terminal to aggregate all exchanges hosted on their platform, smart orders and others, for instance, right? The digital asset revolution, the future will be tokenized. How do we know that? You already saw, you know, the tokenization of diamonds. You saw Leo X, the, you know, the, the recent thing, the tokenization of movie tickets and concert tickets. Anything that can be tokenized of value is going to be tokenized here in the future. Products and services, on-chain bonds. On-chain bonds have the ability to revolutionize financial capital markets. How? 
All right. So people ask that how? Well, like it says, developing a market of unique digital assets with the use of blockchain for securities. There will be no intermediaries currently present in a bond transaction. A little bit more about this. By 2027, more than eight trillion will be stored on blockchain networks. The World Economic Forum said that LCX is building the infrastructure for the new financial world. On top of this, if you don't know how, you know, you know what the how big this is in regards to this, the World Economic, excuse me, if you don't know how big this is in regards to like you know the connection with the World Economic Forum, you can s- comprehend this, right? So we're gonna blow this up. And if anything, I'm going to blow this up a little bit more. This guy just kind of had it worded weird. Um, and it's okay. I mean, it's not his main language. So as you can see right here, you know, look at some of these big players that they're with, right? That is nothing to bat an eye at. You know, some big names. Finastra, Fannie Mae, the Deutsche, you know, Deutsche Bank, Consensus, Bank of England. Citigroup, right? Credit Suisse. Some people call it Credit Suisse. Santander that we talked about earlier. Um, Fidelity, right? With mutual funds and so on. BlackRock, obviously, is a big one. Bank of International Settlements. For crying out loud, Bank of International Settlements is literally the central bank of the central banks. You know, 95%. It was the report the other day. Um uh, you know, was it the, uh, of custody that they hold in assets for the, uh, what was that report? I forgot the exact figures, but you get where I'm going with this. It was it was pretty massive what they got going on. Um, HSBC, BMY Mellon. I mean, we could go on and on about this stuff, right? Yeah, pretty big stuff. The World Bank, Standard Chartered, R3, massive, massive stuff. All right, a tad bit more of what we have. How about this? LCX Earn. We talked about this a little bit. Why is it important? Well, like it says, Earn offers fixed yield regulatory compliant tokenized bonds such as the Euro T7 with a 7% annual return on Euro investments backed by a reputable platform and available to verify users in 30 EEA countries. Now, it's not available to us, but that's a big thing for Europe. How about a token sale manager? Were some people aware of this? Some of you guys were, right? We talked about Galileo Protocol earlier. Token sale manager, fully compliant token issuance solution, combining a all legal and technology um, aspects from smart contract development, token sale, legal documents, registration at regulate, uh, regulator, investor onboarding, and KYC, VIP investor support, private or public token sale. Cool stuff. LCX has consistently prioritized regulatory compliance at a time when the crypto industry is moving into the mainstream. And we have seen it go more mainstream lately. You know, Um, there's some big players that are coming into the mix. It says, we like their approach and feel they set a good standard for the Galileo Protocol team. Said, of course, Team Galileo. Um, Galileo Protocol, right? Leo X. Um, as we know, is the first QRC721 and QRC20 token uh, provided from Quant. It is a Web3 protocol designed to build the infrastructure layer in the Omniverse to connect digital and physical assets on the blockchain through Web3 tokenization service, aka Leo X on LCX. All right, a little bit more in regards to this. The LCX token was issued by LCX AG in full compliance with applicable laws and regulations in Liechtenstein. According to the legal evaluation performed by qualified law firms, LCX token can be legally classified as a utility token under U.S., Singapore, European, and even Liechtenstein uh, rules, guidelines, and, and, and laws, and so on, services. Understanding the tokenomics. Let's go further into this. The initial total supply of LCX, if you you may know this, may not, uh, was basically 1 billion. Now it is 950 million tokens. This is because LCX conducted five token burns during 2019 and 2020. Were you aware of that? 
earning a total of 50 million tokens. And now the large majority of LCX tokens are held by who? The community. Interesting stuff, right? But there's more. There's partnerships, quite a few. Obviously, Quant is big. But, you know, LCX has chosen to build partnerships with compliant companies and institutions that believe uh, that they believe will provide real utility with their network. Some of these key partnerships include, like we mentioned, Quant, right? Um, asset conversion and payment processor. You may have Constellation, DAG. At some point, man, I got to really get into DAG. I mean, I, I feel like, you know, I'm going to miss the boat if I don't get into DAG. So I just want to throw that out there. Um, but yeah, with DAG, right? On-chain data exchange solutions, even Chainlink for crying out loud. You know, some of you guys are still into Chainlink. Some of you guys maybe got out of it, but, you know, Chainlink is a good project. Don't get me wrong. Um, like it says, most use blockchain Oracle. How about Icon, right? I'm not even aware of Icon. Tokenized assets on the Icon network. Are any of you guys into Icon? Let us know. Why do you want, What you know, why do you hold Icon? Obviously, more than just tokenized assets, but what makes them shine? What does it for you? We briefly talked about Cello here. We don't talk about it enough, but you know that is a pretty darn good project. So Cello Foundation Alliance member Hedera Hashgraph. You know Hedera is you know like probably ranked my number six overall in my top ten. You know using LCX's Liechtenstein protocol, Hedera Hashgraph aims to build an infrastructure for digital and tokenized securities. I mean, it just keeps impressing, right? I know this is kind of like a, a deep dive thread. But there's some things I think, for the most part, that are listed here that not everybody knows about. How about this? Even Polkadot, we know that they're a layer zero. You know, this is a key partnership. You know, um, they're a layer zero ecosystem, permissionless and scalable. It says every project must have innovative, uh, excuse me, have an innovative idea, but it takes a strong team to bring that idea into reality. LCX has both a brilliant idea and a team of like-minded professionals who are dedicated to building a sustainable ecosystem. And we know, of course, Monty Massacre is the CEO. Um, and he, of course, he's the founder of LCX. All right. There's just like just maybe a few more things I want to show you guys here. And that is basically this. In June of 2008, Monty began his entrepreneurial career by founding and becoming CEO of his startup Ahead of Times. In 2012, Monty joined Digital Leader Ventures as president, where he initially came up with the idea to start LCX, most recently in January of 2019. I mean, I like Monty Metzger, to be honest. I, you know, he, he inspires me. I, too, am an entrepreneur. Uh, for my MBA, I have an entrepreneurship emphasis. And so when I see people like him, I'm like, man, you know, this guy really took it to the next level. You know, it's... Uh, it's very impressive. All right, a little bit more in regards to Monty, just real quick. Monty and LCX joined the World Economic Forum to develop the founder foundation of the fourth industrial revolution. You hear Richard Common Sense Crypto. He always mentions, you know, the fourth uh, industrial revolution, right? LCX has secured several high-profile consultants, including Don Tapscott. We report that in a in a video in the record section not that long ago. I think. Tom, uh, Don Tapscott joined the team. That was absolutely big. I don't know if you guys have seen the interview or not the interview, the, um, the presentation, um, the speech, I guess you could say slash presentation that he gave at a Ted talk, uh, where he was talking about the use cases for, uh, you know, various different altcoins like blockchain technology. That interview was very, very powerful. That was from roughly about two or three years ago. Um, and to have somebody like, you know, Don Tapscott, uh, being part of the LCX team, that is just, you know, another notch in their belt, right? He's a key player. Um, but yeah, he's a leading authority on blockchain and author of the bestseller Blockchain Revolution. Um, and it says Jimmy Wells, founder of Wikipedia. I mean, you even have uh, Dr. Um, Shoujang Zhang, professor in the departments of physics. These are all very, very impressive people that are part of uh, LCX, right? And look, at we're, you know, we're always trying to, uh, connect the dots or, you know, draw the lines to people. Literally, you have it right in front of you, right? So, you know, you have, for instance, uh, Plamen Rusev. His connection is to the European Commission. Um, this person, uh, Yat Sui, uh, connected to, uh, you know, uh, World Economic Forum. This other one I'm not really familiar with. 
Um, there are even some UN connections, right, with David Mickelson. You know, you have uh, Plan Rusev with Bloomberg, even in connection with Apple. But the key thing is all these particular connections. I don't like necessarily seeing like Celsius there, but, you know, you got to keep in mind not all the guys from Celsius are bad players, you know, which is true. Don Tapscott, obviously, Blockchain Research Institute, you know. Um, some of these BlackRock ties to David Mickelson. So, I mean, these guys have connections. That's the bottom line. Big, big connections. All right. There's um, just a little bit more. I know this is quite the deep dive, but, I, you know, we haven't done anything on LCX in a while, and that's why I want to get into some of this stuff. All right. Mario Frick, former minister of the Principality of Liechtenstein. Yeah, sui. Founder and CEO of Outblaze, Miko Matsumura, co-founder of Evercoin, venture partner of Bitbull Ventures, investor of Pantera Capital. We saw this before, you know, it says goodbye, Goldman, right? New era, LCX, crypto offerings done right, leading blockchain innovator based in Liechtenstein. All right. How about this just for a brief moment? Timons. We talked about Timons in the past. This is one of the key ones that shines for LCX. Timons is the largest blockchain powered marketplace for diamonds and NFTs worldwide. Yeah. How cool is that? The tokenization of diamonds. Users can easily buy, trade, and hold non-fungible tokens, NFTs, which are fully asset backed by real world diamonds. I mean, how cool is it to be able to, you know, mint an NFT and then it's actually tied to real world diamonds. This is just a, another perfect example of you are having precious, precious gems and jewels um, being tokenized. You know, we saw, for instance, um, another particular project, right? Uh, Comtech Gold with XDC, right? These things, they're becoming very, very like, they're going big, right? It's becoming like a big deal. You know, um, all diamonds are physically stored in a high security vault in Liechtenstein. It's pretty impressive stuff, to say the least. At least I think so. So glad to share that with you guys. I know it's quite the deep dive in regards to LCX. And some of you guys knew most about this stuff. But for the newcomers, man, you know, if I was new and I saw some of this stuff, I would want to learn more about Liechtenstein. And if you're wondering, if you're if you are one of those newcomers, check this out. Let me show this to you real quick. So we're gonna share this. This is from CMC. This is in regards to Liechtenstein Exchange, aka LCX. All right. So this is sitting under six cents. I mean, a lot of you guys got into this, you know, right around the two cent mark, but still, this is in my opinion, great opportunity. Um, you know, it's sitting at a rank of 420. And on top of that, if you're wondering, like, where can you get this? You can get it off of a few exchanges. Coinbase, Kraken. Um, you can get it off of Uniswap. You can get it off of, obviously, the Liechtenstein exchange, right? And it has a bunch of different pairings, you know, Quant with LCX, Chainlink with LCX, Shello, um, Avalanche, Litecoin, Constellation Dag. I mean, there's quite a few, right? But there's they're here, even Dogecoin. Are you kidding me? All right. And then on top of that, I believe you can also get it off of um oh, I was gonna say you can get it off of KuCoin. You can't get it off of KuCoin. That's right. I had to go with Coinbase to get this. Fair about that. All right, so um but yeah, I mean, those are the ones that definitely stand out, right? So there it is in regards to LCX. And of course, they have a big community on Twitter as well. Let me show you that real quick. All right. Regulated, audited, secured, next generation crypto exchange, 111,000 followers. So pretty impressive stuff. All right. I saw some DMs come in. I'll check it out in just a bit. Um, I want to kick it back into the comments. I want to welcome Mr. Cody Core. This is at 814. It's about a half an hour ago. I finally caught up to it. Thanks for being here, Mr. Cody Core with the Bam Bam Bigelow Beanie. Uh RIP to the late great Bam Bam Bigelow. All right. Maximum Max. Tim Shea. I don't even know if Tim Shea's still here. Um, but he was then. How do you make my name go white in a box? 
I have no idea what you mean. How do I make your name go white in a box? How do I make your name go white in a box? I don't know. How do I make my ballpoint pen go red by buying at Staples? What kind of question is this, Cody Core? What is this? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying, my friend. All right. The Crypto Jedi says he finally accumulated 10,000 Xera, a.k.a. Quantum. Okay. Well, I was going to say, that's cool. That's that's impressive. That's impressive. I was going to say, man, like, what the heck? 10 quant? Like, you know, you, you probably got charged more in fees than just buying. Will they even allow you to buy 10 Nexera? You get what I'm saying. Um, did you hear about Elizabeth du, Duba W trying to eliminate cold walls? Um no, but I know that she wanted to just make one wallet, right? That was centralized. Uh, but I wouldn't put it past her. It's ridiculous. Thank you for that, LR. Uh, some of you guys bought some silver, precious metals, 59 ounces of silver. Cool stuff. Um, yeah, I actually have uh, all the seasons. So, you know, I still use my PlayStation 3 because it's got a built in. Um, uh, blu-ray player and what i'll do is i'll take these dvds right like black sheep squadron i'll put them in there and it enhances the quality of the picture tremendously um so you know when my dad gets back from his uh rehab i'll have to watch some black sheep squadron with him i know he loves that show and i think he would like that i like black sheep squadron too i i mean here's the thing man i wish that show could have went on for multiple seasons i mean how cool would have been like if um you know, like the show ends with like World War II wrapping up and, and so on. Obviously, we know that with Pappy Boynton's character, I think he gets shot down in 1943 or maybe 44 or something like that. And he had to spend the last year or two. I think he gets shot down in 43. He had to spend the last bit of the war um, being a Japanese POW. Um, but you got to keep in mind, I mean, he, in my opinion, he could have been the ace of aces. I know Dick Bong, who flew a P-38 Lightning uh was the american ace of aces he had 40 but you know boynton i believe had either 27 or 28 confirmed kills uh by 1943 the time he got shot down so if he never would have got shot down i think it's yeah he if he could have went the whole duration of the war he would have been the ace of aces for sure um but anyway i could talk your ear off when it comes to this stuff um oh yeah, Mr. Muff did a good job on that for sure. Hogan Heroes was awesome too. Yeah, I agree. I, I like that show too. Uh, Pepe is rugging as we speak. Yikes. Um, the Crypto Jedi Max do a Street Fighter game, but with meme coin characters as fighters. Yeah, that's. I'm not just trying to do any type of video game, but I mean, if that's your idea for a game, maybe you should make that game. I'm doing two games. I'm doing a 3D turn-based strategy game um based off of my favorite game of all time hogs of war and the other one is going to be a first person shooter game um with the unofficial title of a history of warfare yeah might change in the future all right um uh oh we got some back and forth going on paper will not rug there is way too much money still to be made and no big waltz and then immediately follow up is my paper rope <laughs> say back and forth all right, Triple C, Pepe passed Luna Classic market cap. Oh, God, really? Things aren't looking good for Luna Classic. I don't know. I think still say in the long run, I think Luna Classic is going to be more than fine. I'm just, I'm just being honest. Um, but, you know, we're going to have to get to the height of the bull run, in my opinion, to make that happen. Does that mean I take my profits by that time? Probably. Yeah, probably. I'm not going to, like, diamond hand my Luna Classic. I mean, if I see some big, huge gains, um, yeah, you better believe I'll take some profits. Elon Muff, we are chilling with Squidward. All right. Uh, hey, Muff. Muff says, what's up? Uh, Gucci, bro. Okay. All right. Let's go further down in the comments. Ten. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, that must have been a typo. It's like, what? 10 10x era what the heck did you buy with your 10x era did you buy oh man you couldn't even buy like a candy bar man like you can't even get a candy bar at the dollar store for that right because the dollar store is not like they hardly have anything for dollar anymore yeah you know, what did you buy like uh 
like a half a rack of ice cube trays or something for with your next era or something. I don't know. Uh, my Pepe Leapfrog and my classic. All right. Risk it Biscuit, welcome back. He says QNT. Oh boy, how about this? Maximum Max. When Kim Shay say hi to me, my name is in a white box. <laughs> okay. All right, I get it now. All right, all right, all right. Sorry about the comment about the whole, you know, you know, what the heck, man? Go to Staples, buy a freaking red pen or whatever. And I don't know. You get what I'm saying. Don't go to Staples, though. Staples charges way too much. All right. GS says, Triple C, it's insane. It even passed BSV. Ah, uh, oh, how dare you flutter BS, BSV and, and McQuant. Um, you know, Kushi was like, yeah, memes rule, baby. I've been telling you guys that memes rule since 1967. Back then, I used to drive a nice looking rig. I'm kidding. You don't sound like that at all. I don't know why I said it that way. Um, cool cat crypto, my pay pay moving up them charts. All right, let's read a couple more. Uh, Cody Core Black Sheep Squadron turns into Hogan's Heroes. Ronnie, he is hyped on uh, on pay pay. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, man. It's just some of his coverage is pretty funny. Like, you know, like you even cover like Mononoke Inu. It's just like, oh, God, Mononoke Inu? Really? All right. Um, Ronnie and Austin. Austin is giddy as F. Shaka Crypto. Welcome. Mm. Chuck a con, Chuck a con. Mm. Chuck a con, Chuck a con. Oh, it's Chaka. Yo, Chuck a Chaka. Chaka Crypto in the house. Yeah, yeah. Why did I do that? I don't know. But check out Chaka Crypto on Chaka Crypto on YouTube. Always glad to have you here, Chaka. I do miss the Wednesday 80s uh, memory lane. I'm telling you guys flat out, you want to go down memory lane, you got to hook up with Chaka on, you know, if he ever does it again. It was very well presented. It was fun. It was one of the funnest streams I ever attended. Actually, it was probably the funnest stream I ever attended. And, um, you know, we have like a large turnout or not. It was just fun. Very fun stuff. Looking forward to doing it again if you ever want to do it again. All right. Um, LR said is Dogecoin and Shiba ISO 222 compliant. I heard that somewhere. Um, it doesn't need to be ISO 222 compliant because that's a messaging standard. But, you know, um, no, I don't think so at all. GG, have a good night. Until next time, he says. Uh, no, it's 1969. Oh, okay. Excuse me. Pardon me. Uh, you know, Cody Kors corrected me. You know, he, he's letting me know. It's 1969, Max, not 1967. Get it correct. All right, I'll keep that in mind. Then how about this? Let us know this, Cody Core. How old is that Bam Bam Bigelow beanie you got right there? All right. Um, you know, and uh, I know you say that's from the call center or wherever you're at, but, you know, it looks like a Bam Bam Bigelow beanie. Or do rag or something. I don't know. Um, Mech Mike, why you skip me, Max? I didn't mean to skip you. I'm not trying to intentionally skip anybody. Sometimes that's how it goes. Um, there's a ton of comments, man. So what about this? At least uh at least for instance, I do read some of the comments. Look at some of the other shows, they don't read any comments at all. Like literally the whole freaking time. You guys are in the comments. I've seen them. I've been at some of these shows, trust me. And they don't read any of the comments, period. Zero. The only time to read your comment is if it's a super chat. So come on, give me the benefit of that. Um, if I skip anybody, again, like I said, it's not intentional. I am just trying to look for specific comments or questions. Max, why you skip? Mech, my, you know what? Screw you, Magoo. I just uh, try to <laughs> intentionally skip them. I'm just kidding. All right. Uh, Chaka killing it with pay pay content. Yeah, he is. I saw that uh, the telegram. I was like, well, on a tel was it on a thumbnail? They ban you from the telegram. Why do they ban you from the telegram? Uh, if I do it again, bro, you got to jump on with me. Yes, it was a lot of fun, man. Um, all right. It's good info. Someone share it. LOL. Well, what was it? What did I miss? Oh, man, now you got to make me go all the way up to the other screen. Hold on. Let me see if it's still there. Um, chat disconnected. Please wait. That's what happened. You guys don't believe me? Let me show you something. You don't, you don't believe what I'm telling you? Let me show This is why I probably didn't see it. 
I'm going to share the other screen with you guys. Ah, show these guys something. Think I'm making stuff up. Look at this. See this right here? See this right here? Aha. Uh -huh. Look at this. Think I'm making some stuff up? Look at this. All freaking boil it, mash it, stick it in the stew. I'll show you this right now. Look at this. Oh, man, I got to go 100% apparently. Ah, oh, did it go away again? Dang it. You guys put some comments, and of course it went away. That's all right. What I was going to say is maybe you saw it briefly, but it said chat disconnected. So sometimes I don't even see that. You know what I mean? So, no, you skipped my comment. I want my refund. Anyway. Cushy Boy Miv bought, sold, then 2.8 East. Uh, interesting. Brittany, 1999 is my birth year. LOL. Oh, wow. That was the year I graduated high school. Wow. All right. Well, I missed the 90s, and that was the year you're born. So, hmm. interesting. All right. Let's welcome Tommy. Do you know if Zenfin Network and XTC Network are the same thing, or is it two different blockchain developed by Zenfin? Zenfin Network and XTC are the same thing. All right. Uh, oh, boy. You guys got some FUD going on with Pablo again. Two nights in a row. Pablo Crow is a... Oh, I'm not going to read that. I'm not going to read that. But you do love Volt. Oh. Uh, I'm not going to read any of this stuff. Uh, these are the comments that I skip, for sure. I'm not going to read that stuff. I, I, we try not to go... You know, is there a policy we don't go after other content creators? Sorry. All right. So with that said, let me kick back into our coverage. Um, I think I got a DM. Is it from Elon Muff? No, it's not from Muff. Uh, no Muff. Correction, I accumulated 10K next era, not 10. Yeah, I know. Crypto, that's all good. All right. So on this next particular one, let's see what it is. Um, ooh. Ooh. Uh. Uh huh. All right. We might have to do something special for this one. Here we go. Hello, everyone. This is Max reporting with some Hedera HBAR breaking news. So within these recent developments, I'm going to go ahead and bring it to you live from the Consensus 2023. In fact, it's a recording. Let's so go ahead and jump right into that right now. So with that said, check this out. This comes straight from Generation Infinity, and it states... Jen Infinity interviews co-founder Hedera and CEO Swirls Labs during Consensus 2023. Mance Harmon discusses network decentralization. 1 billion plus TPS every three weeks as a drop in the bucket and much, much more. We're going to give you some of the key highlights on this two-minute two segment. Here we go. Smash that like. What is up, everybody? Solomon here. Super excited to be down at Consensus with Genfinity. Equally excited to say that we have quite the legend uh, in the Hedera Hashgraph ecosystem, who is Mance Harmon. Mance was the co-founder of Hedera, and he is the co-CEO of Swirled Labs. Mance, how are you doing today? Doing great. Thank you. 100%. So I would love to learn a little bit about what are some of the most exciting aspects within the Hedera ecosystem that you saw in 2022? And what are you most excited about throughout the course of this year moving forward into 2023? Well, in 2022, we made some pretty big changes to the organization. 
we completed a process of decentralization that started years ago. We, we first uh, decentralized governance. That started back in 2019 with the council and we brought in our first council members, continue to add council members over time to decentralize that governance. And then subsequent to that, we began decentralizing operations uh, originally by creating the HBAR Foundation initially, followed by the uh, further decentralization of operations out of Hedera into a new organization, Swirls Labs. That's, yeah. that's where we are today, Lehman and I, Prince Worlds Labs. This was a major milestone in terms of the, the decentralization that we wanted to accomplish since then. There have been other organizations that have been created, not by us, uh, but by Hedera, the Hashgraph Association, the DLT Science Foundation. And, uh, you know, so 2022 from a governance and decentralization perspective was was a really big year. Open sourcing the, uh, the, the IP. Open as well. sourcing the IP, another big milestone. Yeah. So we originally started with closed source. So you could definitely watch the rest on YouTube, like it mentions. Um, but I do want to, you know, basically bring that to you guys' attention. Um, the full interview, I'm going to drop it in the comments. Give me a second. If you're wanting to take a look into it, here it is. And basically speaking, you can watch the whole thing if you choose to do so. But, you know, it was nice to see them shine at this particular event, right? Consensus 2023. Um, I want to get into the next coverage we have it's in regards to Casper. Let's go ahead and share this. This comes from Tokenizer. He recently put this out. Um, and if you're on crypto Twitter, I mean, you should follow Tokenizer. He's probably one of the best, you know, deep divers out there when it comes to, like, covering anything that has to do with utility quant xrp xlm energy web token um dag right obviously casper so it says from tokenizer casper is primarily used to fuel the functions and ensure security of casper network a true enterprise grade application layer here are some of its utilities stake to secure network fuel for fees for execution inflation incentives utility means of reward for securing. And as you can see right here, I mean, it shows you like some of the main forms of its utility. You know, incentivization for validator nodes, staking to secure the network, delegation towards validator nodes, inflation to incentivize usage, means of payments on network, payments for platform fees. Um, the summary, the Casper token is primarily utilized as a means of payments, fuel, security, and incentivization on the Casper network. Unlike most layer one tokens, Casper has inflationary model to ensure that token util utilities are incentivized. And holding without any usage is de-incentivized. Enterprises require Casper as a CSPR token to execute business operations validator knows will require casper to increase their stake and security of the network retail participants can use casper for delegation and network utilization so you know it's just a quick read but it's straight to the point and my thing is i wanted to share that so this is one of the things i tweeted out earlier you know, like some people are like, you know, hey, they're saving that and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. If you like Casper, I mean, why not? Like it just gives the person a quick gist of uh, their utility. So I would share that. Nothing really too big in regards to like Casper news. Right. But, you know, from an educational point of view, uh, it was nice to share that. I want to share this in regards to Jasmine. We don't have a lot of coverage tonight in regards to Jasmine, but that's okay. Um, so what I wanted to share with you guys um well there's a little bit i should say i mean it's not like you know like a super deep dive but um originally take a look at this i'll blow this up a little bit more actually let's blow this up a little bit more <clears throat> so take a look at that jasmine coin right and maybe i blow this up just a tad bit more jasmine coin 44,344 percent potential for japan's bitcoin 
where did this come from? You know, some people ask, where did some of these things come up in regards to, you know, Jasmine, you know, um, the Japanese Bitcoin or Japan's Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin is Japan, technically. You know, here's where it originally came from. It was posted by Money Morning Staff Reports back in November 3rd of 2021, right? Big stuff, you know? Let me zoom out a little bit. Pretty crazy to see that, right? So there's that. Um, I'm going to jump into... Um, actually, hold on. I'm sure that tab instead. Sorry about that. Yeah, you can see it plain as day and then blow it up just a tad bit more because I was on the wrong tab. All right, cool stuff. All right, I'm going to jump back to what we have here. Uh, glad to show you guys that. All right, let's jump to this. So on this one, <clears throat> it says it's from ICM Fibian. We have shared his content before. Pretty sure I'm following him. Yeah, he's following me too. That's cool stuff. So he says, Jasmine family, please give this root AMA a listen. He believes that Silo will be the connection between Jasmine and centrality AI ecosystems. Listen to this for a brief moment. This is not like a super deep dive or anything, but just hear me out. So for one, Root is a layer one and will be a layer two to other chains. New use case will be announced for Silo expanding its scope. He answers his question, right? As for the data market, that's something we will dive more into when we talk about the new use cases for Silo. He says his question at roughly 2919 of this AMA, um, but you know, the entire AMA, of course, is worth checking out. He says he's attached images of old AMA questions for reference. I'm glad he did this. He says he consistently shares Jasmine with his, uh, you know, like it says, fluff world kind of interesting concept. Maybe Elon Muff should join this, uh, fluff world, um, uh, because it's a metaverse ecosystem of NFT character collectibles and a global creative community ready to hop in. Oh, yeah, you better believe it. If your name is Elon Muff, you may very well want to join a metaverse of, you know, of NFT characters and collectibles. Your character is Elon Muff, and it could very well be a collectible. So maybe you want to hop on that. I'm actually being serious. Maybe you want to look into that. I mean, come on. It is called a fluff world. Yeah. All right. And also party bearer friends, please show them some love and support and so on. So let's jump into this for just a brief moment. And this is a, something that's obviously Jasmine related. But on this first particular one, it says, you know, what centrality protocols does Jasmine um, basically leverage, right? And how are they critical for Jasmine's tech stack? It's a good question, right? So it says, Jasmine is currently utilizing three services provided by Centrality, communications tools, silo, digital identifiers, single source, and custom blockchain, Jasmine Net, via the PLG platform. Now, in regards to silo, or silo, uh, the decentralized communication protocol underpins the secure knowledge communicator. This is the first silo use case. I'm just keep I'm going to call it silo until somebody says it's actually called silo. I don't know how it's pronounced, to be honest. Um, this is the first silo use case of web to mobile decentralized communication. This means communication between customers and digital support operators remains totally secure. Single source is KYC identity protocol is used to verify users interacting with the Jasmine Internet of Things platform and secure devices to users identities. This creates a whole new way of interaction between people and IoT devices. So that's interesting in itself. The KYC identity protocol is also the login authentication tool for operators of the SKC. In regards to Jasmine Net is a bespoke blockchain that is powered by PLG, centrality, high performance, scalable cross-chain blockchain platform, a key focus of the partnership will be to enable mass adoption, listen to this, of blockchain-enabled autonomous IoT network, which, let's face it, Jasmine is all about that. You know, if we're, you know, I should say it were, if they are teaming up with, um, 
you know, was it Wits and some of these other ones? You know, we talked about the digital twin the other day um, in regards to solving uh, real world use cases for the concepts of, you know, smart cities. All right. Is this another thing to get things done for mass adoption? Like, are we going to have mass adoption not only just on the blockchain, but are we going to have mass adoption for these smart cities? And if so, what would that be to get it done? Well, is this is a perfect example. I think it could be. Um, I'm going to jump back to what we have in regards to this is a little bit more. Um, so on this one, I'll share this tab instead. It states, how does centrality ensure personal data security and prevent leakage? That's a good question. It says users are always in control of their data. Um, SendNZNet has a protocol called Donuts. Can you believe this? That allows developers to build deep permissions into their decentralized apps so they can clarify which data is shared with which party and for how long. Silo gives users control over how content is stored and shared, and new APIs for data preferences and metadata sharing are coming soon. Now, when we get to this next part, it mentions on this Q&A, if you will, it says, question, we are excited to, or from Q, I should say, we are excited to see the various projects and partnerships underway, including Silo, Jasmine, and Centrality Ventures, but none of them use Sends net transactions. Sends will never increase in value no matter how far the related project projects progress. You have a vision for promoting decentralized apps, but what are the strengths of Sends net, which currently has no presence in the market to appeal to developers? I mean, that's a great question, right? So this, in response, you know, they, they, they come up with this. It says, this is not true. For example, Silo is already using Sends net and many other projects are now building on SensNet after the boot and swap process is complete. Jasmine has always been part of the plug network community and has always planned to launch its own plug-based blockchain that can be integrated with SensNet. So I want people to understand that later on, I'm going to take more of a deeper dive into this thing. I have seen, some of you guys have probably seen it as well, there's a diagram that literally talks about where um, sends, um, excuse me, where plug network is positioned. And you got to keep in mind, from what I've seen, plug network has some of that uh, hyperledger fabric going on with it. Obviously, we understand. So does Jasmine. So where they're positioned with the plug network, you know, is pretty darn big. But I want to take more of a proper deep dive to talk, elaborate a little bit more in regards to that. Um, so I'm just saying, uh, be on the lookout for that because I think it's worth looking into. Um, you may not be aware of plug network and so on, but it is a big key proponent for the path forward for the concepts of smart cities, the internet of things, you name it when it comes to Jasmine. All right. I'm going to jump back into the comments. Thank you again to everybody who's here currently speaking and let's see where we're at. All right. Um, Kushi Boy says, the other side of the world is waking up. Yeah, you posted that last night too. Yeah, they are. Um, cool Cat Crypto says, Thanks. someone thinks that PayPay or PayPay going up more. Uh, most of those guys' lives are... Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to go further down. Uh, I'm going to go further down. <laughs> All right. 10 next era is awesome. Wall, yeah, that's funny. Um, ah, I gotta avoid some of these comments. All right, Tommy says, Are you 100% sure? Because, um, I did not find any information on their website saying it was the same thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely sure. Um, let me show you something in that regard. Hold on a second. <clears throat> so, let me show you this. All right, so for instance, this comes from the XTC, you know, the Zenfin site, enterprise-ready hybrid blockchain for global trade and finance, um, combining the power of public and private blockchains with interoperable smart contracts. You look at what's mentioned at the top, XTC network, XTC utility. It means XTC all the way, right? I mean, everything here. Decentralized hybrid interoperable liquid network 
Exchange Infinite, which is Zenfin. It's a delegated proof of stake consensus network. Um, it's XD proof of stake, right? Enabling hybrid relay bridges, instant block finality, and interoperability with ISO 222 messaging standards, making Zenfins, see, hybrid architecture developer friendly. Um, and then, you know, we show this graph like countless times over the last year, you know. Um, Zenfin XD, you know, POS hybrid network. Um, then he gives you the examples about the comparison criteria. We show, we've we literally showed this countless times on um, Zen, see how it says literally, look at this, Zenfin XDC. It doesn't just say Zenfin, Zenfin XDC. So um, I don't know. Let me let me try to blow that up just a tad bit more. So, so I'm saying far right side. So it, it's definitely the same thing, man. And it's okay if you didn't see that, but it's definitely the same thing. That'd be like, how, how should I give you an example? That'd be like somebody saying, you know, um, Q and T and the quant network, they're not the same thing. You know what I mean? They're the same thing. You know, that re that's that, that's a token that represents quant. Like this, you know, Zenfin's XCC is a, is a coin or token that represents the Zenfin network. Okay. Um, Blaze is cool because he doesn't give an ish. Maximum max vanished. Well, this because I was trying to. I need to get um, I need to get a macro set up so I don't have to take so much time to load it up. But I also need to get a new keyboard. <laughs> this keyboard is all jacked up. Um, and my other one, which I'm so upset about, I accidentally spilt a little bit of water on it, and it was a Logitech G15. I also have um, another one with an LCD display. It's like a two hundred dollar, you know. Um, keyboard that got messed up as well a while back i'm so upset with it so now i got like this cheap keyboard and this thing i need to replace this one too so it's like what's up with my keyboards man and i like i it was just it, you know i didn't spill like a whole bunch of water on it it was literally like i don't know like three droplets of water it just went right in the cracks and it was just enough to to obviously damage it and mess it up and then it's just like oh man anyway um please is funny uh okay please is the man but some of his personal views are off oh, oh boy clifford enu shillin karma yeah screw clifford emo enu lost freaking 1400 bucks on that crap yeah but literally it's like taking 1400 dollars and flushing it down the toilet yeah in pesos, uh, Pablo, uh, man, you guys got a lot of bad things to say about him tonight. Wow. All right. My $50 Clifford, but I don't even have $50 clear. I don't, I mean like that bag is probably like worth like pennies at this particular point. It was worth $1,400 and now it's like pennies. All right. Um, he's going to hop in that. All right, hmm, Casper or Caspa, both. I think I, I Caspa is one that I I think I need to get into personally. Um, I'm very impressed with it, but obviously I hold Casper. Um, and no, not one project is from the Boston area, and the other one isn't right. Now you guys are switching from Pablo Crow to Elon Muff. Muff will hop in debt with them pay pay earnings. Muff living in Dijan City right now, Triple C. Want to know something, Kuchu? Well, I think he's living in every city, but I, I agree with you on that. Um, it'll be hard to learn him back in. A slip in a nice, strong edible in his tuna salad. <sighs> That's funny. All right. Wow. All right, Henry Brown. Very interesting plug number. It is. Yeah, I got to take more of a proper deep dive into it, though. Um, maybe later tonight off you know, offline, or I should say, off, like, not streaming. All right, Josh, welcome back. He says, I think ICP, as in not the insane clown posse, thank God, um, Internet Computer will hit more than 1,000 per coin by 2026. Web3 will be huge. In this price range, that's 150 to 200x. I think you could be right. I think there is something big with ICP. I'm very impressed with it. 
uh, impressed with ICP internet computer. Not impressed with the insane clown policy. I just want to throw that out there. All right. Henry Brown, as per a 3 May announcement, Polygon launched three updates to make it easier for developers to integrate a decentralized identity into decentralized apps. Yes, Z, you know, ZK EVM is a big, big deal. Robert Russell, welcome. Let's check out your avatar. What is that? That is you chilling, and you're going like this, like, you know, chilling. Cool. Welcome. Glad to have you here. Um, I don't think I, maybe I've seen you here before, but maybe you just recently changed your avatar. But nonetheless, guys, let's give Robert Russell the warm welcome, the CTN Network welcome. Um, any questions or comments you have, feel free to drop it and, uh, you know, tell us a little bit more about who you are, what you're about, and, uh, you know, maybe share some particular cryptos that, you know, interest you and so on. Um, Nova Scotia, Canada here. Oh, cool stuff. You know, um, I have a couple friends uh, that live in Nova Scotia, and I have a couple friends that also live in New Brunswick. And I also have one friend who lives in um, Prince Edward Island. All right. Uh, let's go further down. Cody Course says, sell everything. Uh, LR says, he thinks Apple Glasses next year. Man, they've been talking about that for a while, though, Apple Glasses. But, yeah, it could be. Metaverse 2025, very, very bullish. Buy Volts. I do have some Volts. Um, and I don't just have the V1. I have some V2 also. Um, I got to I got to get with them. I, I got I've been kicking myself for not doing it, but I did meet the deadline. I just never got it, so I got to let them know about that. Stevie, I bet you have 10 next era though. Kick Pablo Crow into nuts. Uh, I just said that out loud. No, I don't believe. I'm not gonna do that. Um, Cody Core, what? Oh, jeez. I got to stop reading some of these comments. ICP groupies are maybe the biggest dummies alive. Uh, yeah, I think you're obviously referring to the um, insane clown posse, the, the the juggalos, right? Or the the attack of the juggalos, whatever they're called. It's just ridiculous. Like, that is not my type of hip hop, man. All right. Um, let me see what else we got for you guys. So, we talked a little bit about the whole thing of. Um, you know, this thing with Jasmine, which is cool stuff. Um, I want to get to this next part of what we have. And let me see what we got. Um, I don't know. That might be close to wrapping things up, actually. It's Jasmine. Yeah. You know what? That's going to be just about it. So, um... Robert Russell, I want to say, say this to you. We have a daily show every single day of the week. We have had it for literally over a year. People think that's crazy, but it's true. Um, it's every single day at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Everything you see tagged um, is something we have coverage for. Um, but, yeah, it's it's cool stuff. I mean, today I didn't get a chance to cover BSV. I think that was the only one I didn't cover tonight. Um, but we did cover a lot about BSV yesterday. Um, but nonetheless, guys, it's been a great show and I can't thank you enough for being here. Uh, don't be a stranger, Mr. Robert Russell. We hope to see more of you. Um, also check out, for instance, our website, which is ctnnetwork.net. If you want to post some things over there or communicate with our community, you can DM people, you can share threads, you can, you know, choose to do whatever you want to do over there. We have a creative section, a forum. Uh, videos, you name it, over at ctnnetwork.net. Um, but, yeah, glad to have done the show with you guys. Wrap it up. That's what she said. Um, that is not what she said, actually. Um, anyway, I don't know why I volunteered to mention that, but that's okay. Um, Robert Russell says, uh, Baba Luba. Huh. Well, that's all right. All right, guys, going to say peace out to you all. Um, and if anything, like I mentioned before, know what you have, know why you hold it. And we will be back tomorrow for more Crypto Talk Now. Uh, Friday, the best day of the week, right, for all of us. So we're almost there. And then the big weekend. So over and out for now. We will see you guys on the next one. Um, he's doing all right. I just need to kind of check in with him again. He'll be back for the weekends, believe it or not. I did communicate that with him. So if you guys were like, is Larry going to be coming back for the weekends? Yes. Cause I mean, I definitely need to, I need to have a little bit of a break, man. I mean, like going two months straight, 
you know, no, no day off and so on. Um, no, I need to, I need to be able to have some days off. So I'm looking forward to being able to get the weekends off from the live streams and he'll be back. So unless something changes, I mean, I got to keep in mind, he does have problems with his, you know, his eyes. Um, but I mean, if you guys were hoping for WrestleMania with him, he ain't, he's not doing that. He's probably going to go like maybe an hour, hour and 15, probably at the very most. Um, he can't do a lot of on-screen time because of his, um, uh, op, what's it called? Uh, was it called? optic neuritis or whatever it's called. So, I mean, focusing on the screen too long, probably could mess that up. So, um, but you know, he will give you guys some good news and you know, the good and the bad and all that stuff. And it'll be a good show. I mean, you know, you, you guys have been watching the CTN a long time. You're very familiar with Larry, obviously, and he's a good guy. And, uh, I think he's going to, he's going to probably do his best to try to bring it for you guys and read your comments and, you know, He's going to do what Larry does. So uh, we're looking forward to it. You guys have a great night. See you, Stevie, Coochie Boy, Cody Core, Max, need weekend off. I do. Tell him I said what's up. Well, you can tell him what's up, what's up too, if you uh, drop on in as well. But I, I will mention you, Mr. Cody Core. All right. Have a great night. We'll see you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.